Pirates fight for old Southwestern For I'm a modern deer Pirates fight for old Southwestern To oh, Southwestern will be loyal To the sun from, from the sky And remember to the end That a fight will never die Pirates fight Southwestern Pirates football here on the Vibe Live Network. My name is Merle Birch. I'm coming to you live from Berkabah Field in Georgetown, Texas on Senior Day. Joined today by our producer and color commentator Melvin Jones, Chuck Crazy down at the sidelines, Akoya Anderson and Harley Hudson on camera, and Skylar Gillespie, RQA. TJ Vela is off basking in the Miami sunshine and missing out on all the football weather in Texas. And uh, Melvin, the Pirates got back in the win column with an impressive road victory last week in Millsaps College. It's the final game of the season. It's Senior Day. So how important is it for the Pirates to close out strong and take a two-game winning streak into the offseason with the win here over the uh, Suwannee Tigers? Merle, it is, it is very important. I mean, you got to think of momentum for 24 now. The great victory last week against Millsaps, and we talked about this three weeks ago against Trinity. Let's take the last two games and build that momentum, not only for 24, but to get on the recruiting trail and recruit and say, hey, we're coming up play in one of the toughest conferences in all of the nation with both Barry and Trinity on there. So now it's time for the Pirates to get recruiting back together and let's rock and roll for 24. Absolutely. There's a good crop of them here as you see the Pirates gathering in the left end zone and uh, we haven't had a chance to check out to make sure that uh, we're getting them or not, but we're going to try it here. Uh, Trent Crazy, uh, if you're down there on the sidelines, it's not 110 degrees anymore. What's it like down there? We'll come back to Chuck, and we'll get that, that tweaked in a little bit here. Uh, so we're about ready to go here. Southwestern against uh, the Swanee Tigers. Let's go ahead. Let's do this, Melvin. Let's go ahead and just jump right to the pregame interview. That and, works. Uh, we've got about seven minutes. Had a chance to catch up with Coach Austin in the middle part of the week. Uh, I was so confused. I didn't even know what day it was, as you'll find out here in just a second. <laughs> but, uh, we'll hear what Coach Austin had to say, set the table here, and uh, get his thoughts on the win last week against Millsaps in this afternoon season finale against Swanee. Here's Coach Austin. Southwestern Pirates coach Joe Austin and uh, coach, uh, the Pirates spotting Millsaps a 10 10 nothing lead last Saturday afternoon. They bounced right back with 42 unanswered points to get a nice 42 to 13 win. Your thoughts on a, a much needed win for the Pirates last Saturday afternoon? Yeah, it looked a little shaky. Five <laughs> minutes in, we're down 10 nothing, uh, but we we overcame that quickly. We turned four second quarter turnovers into four touchdowns, added a fifth, and took the halftime lead in at 35 to 10. Uh, added another touchdown early in the third, got four more turnovers in the second half for a total of a career, or a school record, eight turnovers, and it ended up being a really nice road win. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because we talked about it on the show a little bit on Monday night. After that first turnover, they had the ball first and goal, I think, around the three-yard line or yeah. something like that. The defense, run defense, has been stout all year, and they showed it again when they pushed them backwards. How much did that set the tone for the entire game and what was to come that afternoon? Well, it was a, it was a good momentum boost to hold them to a field goal. Um, unfortunately, they got the next touchdown. Right. But to, to be down only 10 versus 14 is still, it doesn't look like quite that big of a hill. Right. Uh, so I do think it was a big deal. It was a great stop for our defense to be faced. Your first play of the game is first and goal at the three. Um, it was a really good stop. And it, and it did help because there's a big difference between being down 10 and being down 14. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that if you, you've got guys named Offensive Players of the Week and Defensive Players of the Week, that's probably a pretty good sign. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, Jalen Spriggs got Offensive uh, Conference Player of the Week. He had five touchdowns in the second quarter. I'd say that's a good quarter. Right. Ran it in three times, threw for two more. Uh, Jason Lund was part of an eight-sack effort. He had four and a half in my tally. I think they officially gave him four. I think he had four and a half. Still, <laughs> still a good day. Good enough to get uh, D3Football.com Team of the Week. 
and the conference player of the week. So really good statistical game for our defense with the score record, eight turnovers. Eight sacks is not the score record. We had nine and a half against Trinity in 2016, but still a, a pretty darn good day of creating pressure on their quarterback, creating a lot of negative plays, forcing a lot of turnovers, um, and just continually giving the ball over to our offense. And especially in the first half, our offense did what they're supposed to do, and that's put it in. So, yeah, there's good individual efforts, but I keep tying it back to how it's complementary football. Right. When the defense takes it away and the offense puts it in the end zone, good things are going to happen. Yeah, and that's the point we mentioned on the show. It's, it's one thing for the defense to get the turnover to set the table. It's another thing to, to kind of clean your plate, and that's what the Pirates did on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to touch on on Saturday's game was um, you know, you guys see a lot more than the fans do. 42 to 13 looks good. It was a fun game to watch. Was that the most complete game that they played on both sides of the ball this year? Well, that's a good question. Because you, you just look at the next one, right? As, right. Um, right. Scores were very similar to the Birmingham Southern blowout. Uh, boy, tough to say. That's a great question. You should have told me ahead of time you were going to ask <laughs> I me. I finally that. stumped it. Only uh, took about seven years. The, I, 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 <laughs> I hesitate because. You know, we really took our foot off the gas a little bit on offense in right. the second half. I'd like to have seen us at least get one more with our starters before we started making a bunch of subs. Um, and because we did have it in hand, we made a lot of subs on defense as well. Uh, but to be in the position to where almost everybody that came on the bus trip got to right. get in the game, you can't always get quite everybody in, um, that means you're having a pretty good day. Well, we'll turn our attention to uh, this week's game, the season finale against Swanee. Uh, talk about the Tigers a little bit. They come in here in kind of a similar situation the Pirates are right now. Really good start for Swanee, but they've played the top four teams in the SAA each of the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. Going in reverse order. Fourth place, third place, second place, first place. Um, so our goal is to not let them up off the mat. They've played the best teams in our league, um, but they're really solid. They've got the player that leads the conference in, in sacks and tackles for loss. Their linebacker, number 11, leads a conference in overall tackles. Some two really capable quarterbacks, some good skill guys. They're a pretty good football team. They've just run up against the top four teams in our league right. over the last month. They had a winning record prior to that stretch. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a big game for both teams to end on a high note. Well, when we first started out the season, uh, the first game back in August was about 100,000 degrees outside. As I speak to you today here on a Wednesday, it's the, the cold front's moved in. It's rainy. I see the sign outside says the field's it's Thursday, closed. Thursday, bro. It's Thursday. It's the rain. It's the rain. It's the rain. I, I read because you said it's raining. People were like, it didn't rain Wednesday. They're going to know. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's raining yeah. on Thursday. Yeah, raining on Thursday, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how's that affected you guys with practice and that kind of thing, with the total shift and, like I said, the fields are closed outside, all that kind of thing? Well, this, close to you, yeah, right? this week we, we knew it was coming. We talked earlier in the week with the players about playing for Thursday. It's going to be a little bit mucky. Um, and we really front-loaded our practice to where we're going to go practice this afternoon, but we don't have quite as much work to do right. because we knew the rain was coming. So we got a lot of the physicality done. Uh, today is really more of a polished day on Thursday. Uh, and I think we'll be ready to go on Saturday. The Thursday rain uh, shouldn't bug us in our preparation. And to talk about your seniors a little bit, for those who didn't see the show on, uh, on uh, Monday night, uh, you know, they, those, these group of guys went through quite a bit of interesting stuff over the course of their Southwestern careers. They did. They came in during COVID. Um, this group that's 17 deep uh, had a lot of disruptions <laughs> to their college career, showed a ton of grit and diligence. And I think that's uh, a trait that they can leave with this football program is handling adversity, going through some weird stuff, having grit, having diligence. Uh, a lot of good young men, guys that are going to go on and do some great things. We'll have a really good senior day ceremony before the game, and hopefully we'll send those guys off on a, on a real positive note. And uh, last thing for you, actually, for the year, uh, you know, a lot of people know by now Southwestern, a founding member of the Southwest Conference back in the day. Uh, what people might not know is Swanee was a founding member of the SEC, so it's not exactly Texas against Georgia, but that's pretty cool <laughs> to have some, some two-story programs from big conferences meeting together here on Saturday afternoon. Yes, we've got some cool things. You know, we're undefeated against LSU. The last time we played the University of Texas, we held them to something like 56 yards of offense, their worst game ever. Um, and Suwannee had a legendary train trip where they played like five games in nine days right. and just ran through everybody in the SEC. So, yes, two, two old, olden days, really good football teams, now playing small college football. Um, but, yeah, some, some really cool stuff in both teams' archives. Yeah, that was for all the real serious football geeks out there, especially the D3 aficionados. Uh, any final words here for the game and for the season, Coach? Hopefully it's a great senior day. Hopefully we can end on a high note. Played really well last week. Hopefully that will continue to, to roll over to this one. 
Well, we'll see how it goes here in just a few minutes. Uh, thank you for all your help this year, and uh, we'll be back in time for the opening kickoff. You're watching Southwestern Pirates Football on the Vibe Live Network. And welcome back to Berkelbach Field. Senior day taking place down in the field. We're still five minutes or so away from uh, opening kickoff. Merle Merchant here along with Melvin Jones. Chuck Gracie down on the sidelines. We're still trying to get him dialed in here. The Southwestern Pirates uh, come into today's game at 2-7 and seven overall, 2-5 and five in the SAA after pe defeating Millsaps 42-13 to 13 last week. Coach Andy McCollum is in his first year at the helm of Swanee. Coach McCollum's Tigers come into Georgetown at 3-6 and six overall, also 2-5 and five in the conference after falling to Trinity 44-6 to six last Saturday. This will be the first meeting between these two storied schools. And uh, Melvin, we alluded to it in the pregame interview, a lot of history here with Southwestern being a charter member of the Southwestern Conference. Swanee, a charter member of the SEC. They're not thinking about the past, though. They're looking at the future and trying to ensure as high a finish in the conference race here as possible. Absolutely. I think that's the, the biggest thing right now is to finish as high as possible. Again, momentum for 2024 is the key thing for us right now to see how much this Pirate team will grow in the off season off season starts at the end of the game today yep so now it's time to move on forget about 23 23 happened and now let's grow with some of the young stars let's grow with the offensive line and if this offensive line can get better in the off season look out for this pirate team next season well, why don't we go ahead and uh, take a quick break, and by the time we come back, hopefully we can get Chuck Crazy dialed in here, and uh, we'll get him down on the sideline, get his thoughts, and we'll have a quick word in with Coach Austin if we can get it all figured out here. So we'll take a break and be right back. You're watching Southwestern Pirates Football on the Vibe Live Network. First off, thank you for being here. Jordan Battles. Battles weak over the defender. It's Crosby's second state championship appearance. Baytown, Texas for the 51st time. How does that sound?
And welcome back to Berkelbach Field. Merle Bertrand here. Getting ready for the coin toss on the field for the Southwestern Pirates. Looks like Peyton Ludeman, number 11, number 60. Anderson Johnson, good to see him back in uniform. He's been binged up the past few games out of Cypress, Texas. The senior wants to dress for the final game. Not sure if he'll get in or not, but good to see him out there in uniform anyway instead of in the civvies for Swanee. Number one is Caleb Shea. Number 18 I see out there, Raymond Rodarte. Looks like 20, that's Matt Miles Johnson. I can't see is number 41 is Quinn Johnson, the captains for the Swanee Tigers. Yeah, I believe you are correct. So Swanee won the toss, Merle. So Southwestern to get the football first. Man, we're still trying to connect with uh, Chuck Crazy down at the sidelines. Sometimes technology doesn't always cooperate. We live in a world where technology is life now. And sometimes <laughs> when it doesn't happen, well, here we are. Yep. We'll keep working on that. If we don't get the coach in the pregame, we'll try to get him dialed up at halftime and get, get the truck between quarters. Southwestern, the home team, obviously, in the black jerseys and pants with the golden rod numerals and the black helmet. Swanee in the road whites with the purple numerals, purple trim, and gold helmet. Beautiful football weather here in Georgetown, Texas. It's about 58 degrees. Cloudy skies. Rain last night, but it's kind of cleared out, so it kind of looks like a Midwestern afternoon. I said it, Merle, before. Uh, I am a desert guy. I love the heat. This is not my type of weather, but it is football weather and an overcast day. Veterans Day. Happy yes. Veterans Day to my brothers and sisters in arms. Free meals for us today. There you go. <laughs> and I'm actually glad you mentioned that because uh, Coach Austin sent me a text last night. Uh, he wanted me to pass on a, a Veterans Day greeting on behalf of him and the Southwestern Pirates to all the veterans out there. So on behalf of uh, Coach Austin and the Pirates, happy Veterans Day to everybody and thank you for your service. Hey, I think we've got the... We've got life down there to Chuck. I don't know if we get a chance to get to him, but uh, nothing else. We won't get the, Chuck, uh, the coach uh, before the pregame. We'll get to him at halftime, but we'll get Chuck's thoughts here right after this kickoff. So Swanee kicking off from left to right from the 35-yard line. Bit of a breeze at their back, 50-some degrees, about 55 degrees here in Georgetown. The ball is on the tee, and we are underway in the season finale. It's going to sail back to about the into and out of the end zone, just barely in southwestern will take over. Chuck, where are you? Do you hear us down there? Thought we had them back, but not just yet. Not quite yet, so we'll keep, we'll keep working on that. Southwestern's offense come out on the field here. The Pirates averaging on the season 23.3 points per game, 337.7 yards per game going up against the defense. It's given up 34.3 points per game here in Sewanee. So first down, 10 at the 25-yard line. Two receivers wide to the right. Jalen Spriggs, the freshman quarterback, getting the start today. And it's a handoff up the middle. Looking for a running room and out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Right away, freshman Devin Phillips, the leading ball carry. 80 carries, 362 yards, 4.5 yards per carry. Takes that one for 7 yards and a second down and 3. Yeah, Phillips was looking for a hold on the right side and looked like he found a great penetration there by the offensive line to get the Pirates into a second to third situation. And boy, if you can get in that short situation, that's what you want for sure. Sprague, second down and three from the 32 yard line. Two receivers wide to the right, two to the near side, just underway here in the final game of the season. Hand off again, bounce it to the outside, is gonna get the corner turn across the 35, across the 40, not to the 42 yard line. That'll be good for about a nine yard pickup and a Pirate first down. That's Phillips again, and I'm telling you, this running game already established to begin this ball game. Maybe the Pirates could get things going. First down or 10 at the 42-yard line. Jalen Spriggs. 87 out of 156, 1,224 yards, seven touchdowns, six interceptions, five rushing touchdowns on the season, three of them last week. Pass complete to the 46-yard line, out across the 50 and into Tiger territory down to the 47. That one complete to another freshman, Sam Johnson. Getting some feedback on, on our end a little bit. Again, technology is something else, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. You love it when it works, and 
Touchdown. Not so much fun when it doesn't. Pirates working right now. First down, 10 at the 47-yard line. One receiver wide right, two to the near side. Opening drive of the game. Spriggs, handoff right up the middle, and the running game working inside the 45 down to the 43. I'm telling you already, Merle, I'm very impressed with this run game from the Pirates today. They are establishing, they're using their offensive line to the best of their ability. I'm telling you, run block today is going to be the key for yep. a Pirates victory. This offensive line, a makeshift unit, a lot of second string guys, but by the you know fourth or fifth time they're in the game, they're not second string anymore. They are the offensive line. Right. And they got to start playing like a second down and six from the 43-yard line. They've been improving as the season wars on. Spriggs. Good protection. It's going to tuck it under and run. Ford, he got a room on the edge to the 35 and steps out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Nice block on the edge by Kai Jackson to give him an extra five or six yards down the field. And the Pirates have it first down 10 to the 33-yard line. We talked about how the, the, the offensive line, the run blocking, the pass protection right there was outstanding. First down 10 at the 33-yard line. Two receivers here to the near side. And Spray's going to keep it himself, puts the head down, and gets it down to about the 32. He'll gain a yard, maybe two yards out of the 31, second down and eight. He's not here to defend himself, Melvin, so I'm going to – I know T.J. Vale is allegedly attending a class in Miami. He's probably got us on in an earbud somewhere. We're going to blame him for the technology not working. He can't <laughs> defend himself. Congrats, T.J., on finishing up this grad program. Absolutely. Fantastic. Outstanding, phenomenal success. Phillips around the right side. Going to get it inside the 30. Stiff arm comes back to the 25. Look out, 20 to the 15. Inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. That is success. Devon Phillips again with a run, this time to the right side of the offensive line. And this offensive line is just feeling nasty this afternoon. I love it. I do too. Good to get out to a good start here. Now let's cash it in. First down and 10 at the 13-yard line. Pirates on the move. Trips to the near side. Spriggs. Zone read. Pass over the middle and intercepted in the end zone. To the 10, to the 15, out to the 20, and knocked out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Harris Cravens, the junior. Pass looked like it was thrown a little bit behind his intended receiver, Melvin, and threw it right into Craven's arms, and a good drive is going to be turned away empty. Yeah, Jalen Spriggs that time was getting a little greedy and threw it right into the defender's arms. Interceptions in the red zones are killers oh. to a team, and that's something that could haunt the Pirates going forward. So the Tigers will take over first down 10 at their own 21-yard line, moving left to right. Their offense averaging 20 points a game, going up against the Pirates' defense, giving up just under 39. Handoff right side, and the running defense for the Pirates has been stout all year long. On the carry for the Tigers was Walker Robinson, a sophomore, and he's going to be stacked up for no gain in the play. Second down coming up. I want to see if this defense can stand on their head and get penetration. More of a pass rush for this defense on – for uh, the Pirates. And let's see if they can force a three and out here to get the offense back on the field. Second down or 10. Tigers have their own 22-yard line moving left to right. Hand off again up the middle. Bouncing now to the outside. Breaks one tackle. Can't get by the second one. Down to about the 27-yard line. Short gain there. Knocked down by Jameer Martin. Jameer Martin, 5'9", 190. Just strong up there as a linebacker position. So many seniors on this defense, unlike the offense, but that's a freshman right there making a nice play. And a third down and five coming up. Big third down here for the Pirate defense trying to get off the field. Huge third down, third and five. This is an opportunity to get off the field, force a three and out, get your offense back on the field. Quarterback to Decorn Thomas in the shotgun. Dropping back, looking. Pocket breaks down, rolling to his right. Looking downfield, looking, looking, looking. Now fires over to the right side. Got a receiver behind the defense and overshot him. Tried to get it down the field to Raymond Rodarte, who's listed as a quarterback. Rush was good, better coverage by the secondary. Yep. And there was absolutely nothing Sawani could do at that point. Three and out, that's what we talked about. They forced that three and out, and the offense can come back on the field. So the Pirate defense up to the task. And the punting unit on here for the Tigers. 10-0-1 to go, first quarter, no score. 
Adrian Garza back deep for the Pirates. And he's deadly back there. Low snap. Beautiful punt. Man, that thing's a rocket. It's going to sail back to about the 15-yard line over the shoulder. The catch made there by Garza. Now back up to the right side of the 20 and up to the steps out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. So a nice return by Garza. Out kicking your cover just a little bit, but I think if you're Swanee, you'll take those kind of mortar shots any day. Absolutely. Now, if you're Spriggs in this offense, that interception didn't, didn't matter. Now right. it's time to go back out there, establish the run once again, and play smart football. They did that last week against Millsaps. They need to continue that momentum today. So first down and 10 for the Pirates, second possession. Moved it right down the field smartly the first time. Let's see what they can do here. First down and 10 at the 24-yard line. Email is open, by the way, southwesternfb at gmail.com. Handoff up the middle again and busts free and gets it out to about the 27-yard line. Stacked up for a short game, but it turned into about a medium gain there for Devin Phillips. He doesn't run like a freshman, Melvin. Not at all. Think about the young talent that is coming back on offense next season, Merle. You got Phillips, who's a freshman. Spriggs, who's a freshman. They have a lot of talent that they're using right now that as the next two, three seasons come along, man, this Pirate team is going to be deadly. Second down and six to go. Phillips again, up the middle, again. Gets it out to the 30-yard line. A short gain of a couple of yards. They're going to set up a third down and four at the 30-yard line. Third and manageable right now. Yeah. You want to get yourselves in third and four situations as much as possible. Third and four and below. Hey, that's the best situation you could be at in the, as an offense. So trips wide right. Third down and four coming up here for Jalen Spriggs, the freshman. Let's send Phillips in motion. And it's going to be a quarterback draw. Faked him out. Oh, but a nice recovery there by the Tiger defense. Going to stack him up two yards shy. Of the first down. Looked like that was going to be a big play, but Malcolm Shaw, the freshman, for Swanee, not fooled. What do you do here, Merola? They're sending up the punting unit, but you have this Swanee defense on their heels. I probably wouldn't went for it, even deep in my own territory. I don't know early. I don't know. It I, is kind of early. I like the idea. Six and a half minutes into the first quarter, I got it, but, man. Charlie Fournier set to punt this one away. Averaging 34 yards a punt. And a wobbly end over end kick is going to take a pirate roll. It's going to turn into a beautiful punt. Stays in bounds, rolling all the way down the sideline like a bunt along the baselines. Town of the 12 yard line. 38, 48, 58, 64 yards, no return. That'll boost up your average, Melvin. Charlie Fournier, Vandegrift grad with a nice punt to put Sawani deep in their own territory at the 12. Wow, what a punt. Yeah, Charlie's probably as bummed out as I am today with Vandergift <laughs> losing last night to Lake Travis. I'm surprised you and I both have voices. I've, I know. I've done six games, I believe, this <laughs> week. You've done a few. It's been a, it's been a long week for us, but, hey, we're here. First down and 10 for the Tigers, pinned out at their own 12-yard line, and a swing pass left side complete up to the 10, looking for running them to the outside and knocked down at the 16-yard line. They swung it out there again to Raymond Rodarte. Swanee did something that I wasn't expecting that time, Merle, and they played, uh, well, the Pirate defense played zone, rushed three, dropped eight. You don't see that too often in our early down situations right now, especially this early in the game. It's Jeremiah Young in the quarterback. They platoon between him and Jacorn Thomas. Young, 43 of 81, 467 yards, five touchdowns, and an interception. You heard Coach allude to that in the pregame interview that they swap them out. It's Young right now, dropping back, looking pass over to the left side. That ball's caught at the 25-yard line, out across the 30. And out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Yeah, that's Dyer Barnes there, the wide receiver. He was out open in the flat, and there was no one near him. That's enough for Samani first down. So the Tigers on the move. First down, 10th, their own 35-yard line. 7 or 9 to go in a rapidly moving first quarter. First, first down the afternoon for Sawani. So now this defense need to come up big. Yep, let the chess matches begin. Handoff right up the middle to the left side across the 40 and knocked down there by Peyton Ludeman, but not before a 10-yard pickup and a Tiger first down. That was Walker Robinson, the sophomore, out of Chapel Hill on the carry. First down for the Tigers. Robinson found a hole in the middle of that Pirate defense, and he exposed it. 
Pirates right now going 3-3-5 three, three, in the defensive lineup. And right now, Sawani trying to find some holes in that alignment. So Tigers putting the drive together here. First down, 10 at the 45-yard line. Trips here to the near side. Young. Handoff left side. Going to be dropped for a loss in the backfield. Malik McDonald. I checked that. That was actually Jason Lund. I thought it was 92. It was just number two. Jason Lund getting in there on that stop. So a three-yard loss. Lund. With a big play, second down and 13 from the 42-yard line. Four receivers bunched up to the left side. Now they send one of them in motion, and it's a shuttle pass underneath. Looking to cut it back up to the 45, reversing field. Across, it runs into the official, and that helped him out. Malik McDonald there. That looked like that might have gone up to the left side, but he ran right into the official. Malik McDonald says thank you very much. Wraps up Dagum Samuel for a nice play, but it could have been worse for the Pirates. Absolutely. The official played the 12th man at that time on the field for the Pirates. Great deception by the Tigers, yeah. though. Quads bunched to the to the top. That was very odd formation, but it worked. Looks like they had half the team over there in front of their bench. Right. You don't see too many quads bunched no. to the top, and, and the Tigers, with the deception, was able to pull off a nice run from it. You'll see them sometimes, but they're usually in a diamond. That was a different look. Yeah, that was a completely different look. Third down and five from the 50-yard line. Pressure coming. It's going to step up through the pressure, and he is not going to get there. Nice open field tackle there by Jameer Martin, the freshman, again, to keep that one from first down yardage. Fourth and one. We'll see if the Tigers go for it here. Kind of a no man's land. Yeah, but the, the coverage by the Pirates that time forced the Tigers to rush that. As looks like they're going to go jumbo formation as Jeremiah Young is still out there. Yes, he is. Fourth and one from the Pirate 46. Big play early. Young is going to be up under center. Three backs in the backfield. Handoff. And he's not going to get there. Pirates stuff it. Losing a couple yards. 34 and 11. Ludeman is 11. 34 on the stop for the Pirates. We don't have an 11. Yeah, 11's Peyton Ludeman. 34. Yeah, we don't have a 34 on the roster at all. I know who that is, and I bet Chuck <laughs> Racy can tell us who it is. Chuck probably knows exactly who it is. I want to say Sefcik. I think it was Sefcik. I think I remember that we didn't have him on the roster before for some reason. But in any event, the Pirates get the turnover on downs. First down 10 at the 47-yard line. I think it was Jake Sefcik involved. And handoff Phillips. Starts left, cuts it back to the right, across the 50, into Tiger territory at the 47-yard line. Merle, I am loving the game of Devin Phillips. He Me is too. chopping up this Tiger defense at will. And he's been the best player for the Pirates thus far in this game. Rushing yards racking up for the young freshman. Gains six on that one. Second down and four at the 47-yard line. One receiver wide right, two to the near side. Going to give it to him again. And this time he has to fight to get back to the line of scrimmage. Spun out of the tackle. Fell forward for a yard to make it a third down and three. Hey, it was better than a loss, I'll tell you that. So great job by Phillips to just get something out of it. Running to his own guard there. Brings up a third and three situation. Third down and three. Ball spotted at the Tiger 46-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the near side. Spriggs in the shotgun. And moving on the line, boy, you can't do that. Don't need to make it any harder on yourself. Not at all. And 33 turns to third and eight just from the movement alone. We say it all the time, Merle. Penalties will kill a drive quickly. Yes, they will. And third and manageable, fantastic. But now you're at a 38 situation. So now what could have been a running down turns to a passing down. And right now the Pirates in a no-man situation at midfield. So two receivers to the right, to the near side. Third down and eight coming up now for Southwestern. Spriggs in the shotgun. Dropping back. Great protection all day to throw. Fires over the right side. Got a receiver open. It's going to be good for a first down and out of bounds. Nice route there by Ken willis Roberson out of League City to pick up the first down. The Pirates move the sticks. Yeah, I believe that was great on Thompson that time, Merle. But either way, that was fantastic route oh, yeah. running <laughs> by Thompson. 
to pick up the first down. Two number 18s. We have not had coffee. It is an <laughs> early morning. It is very early. <laughs> it is very excusable right now. <laughs> so a nice reception there by Thompson. First down 10 at the Tiger 43 yard line. Pirates on the move again. Straight ahead handoff. This is Colby Bartlett pushing the pile inside the 40, rumbling down to about the 37 yard line. Just turn that play into a rugby scrimmage. It picks up about six yards, second and four. Again, their best weapon today for the Pirates has been the run. They have established the run, and it's something that the Tigers absolutely cannot stop. Well, again, the, this Tiger defense giving up 34.3 points per game for over 412 yards a game. So there are vulnerabilities there. Nice play that time, however, knocking down Bartlett was number 11, Keegan Glaze, a senior li or junior linebacker. Yeah, Glaze came across the line and was able to pick up the offensive line and, be, and was able to tackle Bartlett there. Bartlett was still able to get positive yardage, though. Yep. Third and four coming up. Glaze, the Tigers' leading tackler, nine tackles per game, four and a half tackles for loss, and two and a half sacks. Nice play there. Second, third down and four coming up here from the 37-yard line. Spriggs dropping back. Nice job by Bartlett picking up the blitz and that should be a catch. That should be a catch. They're gonna say he trapped it. It was close. Nice job by Colby Bartlett picking up a blitz on the left side to at least give Spriggs a chance to throw. Throw a little bit off the mark and looks like the Pirates are not gonna go for it here, Melvin, on fourth down across I the 50. I see special teams getting helmets on, so I'm not for sure. It looks like the offense is gonna stay right here out there on the field. 15 on the play clock, though, Merle. I'm, I'm yeah, thinking maybe they got to hurry up. In formation, trips here to the near side. Play clock down to seven. Spriggs dropping back, looking all day to throw. Now the pocket breaks down. He's going to be sacked. Sacked back at the 41-yard line coming in from the backside was Desmond Gilbert, another freshman. Yeah, Jalen Spriggs didn't have too much downfield, but he has to learn to get that ball out quick. And what, what turned out to be what, what should have been a very positive drive for the Pirates. Turnover and downs, and the Tigers now with momentum. Offense back on the field. We've seen a lot of action here between the 20s, but no scores yet with 109 to go first quarter. Tigers take over on downs. First down, 10 at their own 41-yard line going from left to right. Hand off left side and that pirate run defense there to answer the bell. Loss of three yards on the play. Jason Lund involved. And trying to see who else that is out there. Pirate defensive line start, starting to stand up here. The very beginnings of this ball game. Under a minute to go quickly. Very fast first very quarter. Fast. On the carry was number 33, Walker Robinson. Loss of two, second down and 12. And a late pitch out left side, and that's not going to get anywhere. Crashing in from the back side was Blaine Corkin. There's a flag down in the backfield. And it's going to be holding on number 54 for Sawani. Let's see what the Pirates do. Do they take this penalty or decline it? Yeah, it'll be third and 14 or second down and 22. Interesting decision for Coach Joe Austin. I decline it. I do too. But that's why we're up here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Holding. Offense number 54. And you decline it. Yeah, Max Grumbles tried to prevent the blitz from coming and just couldn't stop it. Now, that was a late call, late option called out there by Young. I'm surprised he pitched it. Nonetheless, it worked out for the Pirates. It almost looked like a busted play. Like it he did. Was just kind of ad libbing there a little bit. So now Southwest had a chance to get off the field here. We might just, well. Yeah, they've got to snap it before the game clock runs down. So third down and 14. Should be the last play of the quarter. Young fakes the handoff under pressure. Rolling to his right, looking, looking. Now fires over the right side. That ball is somehow caught inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Just threw it up for grabs, and somehow Dyer Barnes makes a great catch, and that's how the first quarter is going to come to an end. 
my goodness, Merle. The crazy thing is these edge rushers are getting to Young. Yep. And some way, somehow, Barnes was able to grab it, and they flipped sides, and let's go to the second quarter. Well, Chuck, where are you? We're going to try to go to you again and uh, see if uh, he can get us here. I'm not sure where he's at down there. I see him, but I don't know if he can get him. I don't him. know if he can hear him. He's having some connection issues, it sounds like. Boy, Melvin, that'll break your heart. They had him being in pursuit and a good coverage, great throw, and a nice catch. Fantastic coverage. Better throw, though. Young yeah. hit Barnes, and it was absolutely nothing they could do. Now, again, the Pirate edge rushers are getting too young. At that time, for some odd reason, Barnes was able to escape the coverage, and what a grab. Real quick score update, Merle, from Happy Valley. The Jim Harbaugh-less number two Michigan Wolverines now lead 14-9. Penn State just drove down, scored a touchdown. So Michigan doing good. They are the most talented team in the country, and they're showing it. Yeah, it's going to be up to their, their coaching staff to, to take over duties there. The Jim Harbaugh saga seems like it's been going on for about five years. Yes, and it's still going to go on, so... <laughs> Four wise to start off the second quarter. So first down and 10 going from right to left now. Hand off up the middle and not much running in there. Maybe a yard or two for number 33 Walker Robinson. Stacked up there by the Pirate defense. Leading the charge. DJ James. Gain of about three in the play. Second down and six coming up from the 16 yard line. Yeah, it's time to make a stop right here in the red zone. Yeah. If you're going to give up points, Three is better than seven. Jeremiah Young, the junior quarterback out of Boca Raton, Florida. Has three receivers to his left and one to the right side. Dropping back. Good protection this time. Now he's rolls to his right, fires back over to the left, and that ball's intercepted in the end zone. Made a mistake and brought it out. But Peyton Ludeman with a great interception to turn away the drive. And the Pirate defense evens the score. One interception apiece. That was scary. Dallas Grooms was wide open in the end zone <laughs> for the Tigers. And luckily for the Tigers, Young just didn't see him. Turnover for the Tigers and the Pirate offense back on the field at their own three. Looked like Ludeman came down with it and almost fell out of the end zone. He knew he wasn't <laughs> supposed to, but he couldn't stop himself. But the main thing is the Pirates get the football. Now you got to take care of it here. You pin down at your own three-yard line. And this where this running game will be effective right here down in the own end zone. This offensive line has been destroying the defensive line of the Tigers all game long to see if they continue that, that stride. I'd be all for a 97-yard drive here. And this time Spray's going to keep it himself and gets it out to about the four. Wrapped up there by Micah Milraney, a sophomore linebacker out of Winchester, Tennessee. Second down and nine coming up from the four-yard line. Bill said away second quarter, still no score. No more. We, we're we're going to blame TJ because we didn't have this these many problems when uh, right, right. he was here. So right now we're having technical issues with, with Chuck. We're having a few camera issues. But you know what? We're still pushing on. We'll make it through. Yes. Final game of the year. Second down and nine from the four-yard line. Two receivers wide left, two to the near side. And off, off right tackle, trying to get the corner turned and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about it. On the care of that time for the Pirates, another freshman. Yes, another one, Leroy Rodriguez, the freshman out of Corpus Christi. Merle, you almost sound like a broken record. Freshman, freshman, it's incredible. freshman. Insane. And they're only going to get better. Now, that's something Coach Austin and the staff is used to, is developing young talent. They started out with all freshmen back in 2013, so they're used to it. And you're right, they're going to get good as the years wear on. Swing pass, right side complete to the five. Makes the first guy miss and dies out to the nine, but can't pick up the first down. Yeah, three and out. This close to your own end zone is not something you want, but Pirates forced to punt. Aiden Huerta on the reception. Gives him a few more yards, but Fournier will have to punt it from his own end zone. He's standing about five yards deep.
will have the wind at his back if he can launch another one. Good snap back, good protection, and a pretty good kick. Great punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 48-yard line by Dyer Barnes, and that's where Swanee will start this drive. First down 10 at their own 48-yard line. As the as Skyler Gillespie, our QA, says, this is a slugfest. A couple of boxers just going at it here. You know, I didn't think uh, a 0-0 game into the second quarter was on my bingo card today. <laughs> Not at the collegiate level, anyway. Not at all. So first down to 10 Tigers moving from right to left at their own 48-yard line. Tigers going in the pistol. Hand off up the middle, bouncing to the right side across the 50, up into it at the 50, and to the 49-yard line, gained of about three yards. I was busy watching that guy carry his box of pizza and food up the stairs and almost tripped and face planted. <laughs> Gators three on the play, second down to seven from the Pirate 49 yard line. Early second quarter, still no score. To receive his wide right, one to the near side. Pistol formation again. Swing pass, right side incomplete. Tried to get it out there to Samuel. And the Pirate defense again with a chance to get off the field here on a third down and seven coming up. Yeah, even if he would have gotten to Samuel, I don't think Samuel had enough room I, as the Pirates was all over that. Yep. Two receivers right, two to the near side. Third down and seven coming up from the 49-yard line. Dropping back, looking. Now the pressure comes up the middle, steps through it, fires over the middle of the field, and a great catch at the 31-yard line. Threw it behind his receiver, but Dagan Samuel leached back across his body and hauled it in. Pirates did everything right, Melvin, but get the stop. Too much time given to Young that time to throw that ball in the defense. Just couldn't hold up. Now they're inside of Pirate territory at the 32. Yeah, you just can't give the quarterback that much time. Right. That's exactly what happened, and Young was able to find his receiver open. Alec Gomez lost the helmet. will have to come out of play. He's frustrated because he almost got there. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line with the fresh set of downs. Young running back in the pistol. Hand it off left side, and not much running in there inside the 30. It's good second effort to push it down to the 28-yard line. Not much of a gain turned into a four-yard pickup. Getting up from the bottom of the pile is going to be Cam Williams Roberson. Second and six coming up. Yeah, this is a team that the Pirates should definitely dominate, and right now is not the case. It's too close for comfort right now for the Pirates. Yep. And they need to get some momentum going. One receiver to the left. Young. Play action. In trouble. Steps up. Fires over to the right side. Jump ball in the end zone. That ball is well overthrown and out of bounds. Good coverage downfield. Good pressure coming up to force uh, Young just to get rid of the football. I think that was, once again, Jason Lund applying the pressure. And a third down and six coming up. Merle, I would love to see an all-out blitz right now from the Pirates to get Young off of his feet and make him do something crazy, throw another errant throw. Another turnover right now will be fantastic. They're almost getting to him with a yes. regular rush, to your point. It's the third down to six from the 28-yard line. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Young dropping back. There is a push from the edge, and it's a screen pass. One-handed catch. Beautiful open field tackle. What a play in the open field by Blaine Cork and the senior, or that would have been a first down. Now, that is exactly what I was looking for on this drive was more pressure, and they got it, and it's going to force – the Tigers into a field goal situation. So it will be a uh, 44, let's see, yeah, 44 yarder from the near hash. This should be Jack Satterfield to kick it from the near hash. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. I don't know. He barely, he got, barely got through. No, he missed it to the right. Miss it to the right. I couldn't quite tell. You could see the wind knocking that ball down a little bit. Yeah, I couldn't tell myself. It looked as though it was heading towards that direction, though. I thought it was going to be good. 
It's sort of like throwing a frisbee to yourself. The wind got a hold of it, and it just veered to the side at the last minute, and the Pirate defense holds. We're still scoreless with 9.45 to go. Now the offense needs a drive yes. right here. This is a team you, you are clearly more talented in. Let's get this into the end zone. And finally got some field position to work with. It's not great, but at least it's not your own three-yard line. Exactly, better than the last drive. First down at the 27-yard line. Quarterback draw from Spriggs. Out across the 30 and drug down from behind at the 32-yard line. Gain of about five yards on the play, second and five. Spriggs is so elusive. Isn't he? So elusive. And as a freshman, once he can throw the ball downfield better, my goodness. Six-yard pickup. Fantastic. That'll, you get a lot done when it's second down and four. Yes. Two receivers left. Handoff, and they're going to lose some yardage here back of the 30 as they swallow up Colby Bartlett for a couple-yard loss. Loses two, and it's going to set up a third down and six now from the 31-yard line. Yeah, Merle, I'm surprised there wasn't an RPO there and yeah. have Spriggs go out to the right because he has some room. So now this turns into a pseudo passing down for the right. Pirates. Third down to six from the 31. Two receivers left, one to the near side. Spriggs in the shot, actually trips wide left. Spriggs in the shotgun. And he's going to keep us up. Now a late pitch to Bartlett on the edge. Out across the 35, head of steam across the 40. First down and more flag on the far side, however. It's going to be holding on the Pirates. Yep. That's a shame because it was a good-looking play. I love the play call, though. You yeah. don't see too many college teams doing the option anymore. I love that. But now third and six is going to turn into third and 16. I hate any sort of hole, but I especially hate holes that probably aren't necessary. Right. And that was one of those where it was completely unnecessary. Right. Well away from the play. So that will now make it a third and 16 from the 21 yard line. I love that play call though. Mm -hmm. Come back to that one later. Yes. Pirates now going four wide. Line to reach the 37 yard line. Spriggs in the shotgun. Bart Bartlett lined up to his right side. Low snap, he's got to pick it up off the carpet. Gets it to Bartlett and breaks a tackle. To the 25 to the 30. And knocked out at the 32-yard line. Something out of nothing there. Picked up the yard, penalty yardage and more. Still stopped shy of the first down by Quinn Johnson. And that's another force three and out by the Tiger mm. defense. The stay score is much longer. I'm going to start calling it a soccer game. Getting close to that. <laughs> Midway into the second quarter, we are still scoreless. That's insane. 48 set to punt it away again. Both teams have had chances. No, the beautiful punt by Charlie Fournier. Fielded at the 20. And that was no, a silly a, penalty. Yep. That was a fair catch interference, and that'll tack on 15 yards the other way. Not sure if he just didn't see the hand come up or just couldn't slow himself up, but in any event, it's going to turn. Field position from the 28-yard line to the 43, just like that. Yeah, I believe that was uh, number eight, Aiden O'Connor. Couldn't stop his own momentum there. And well, final game of the season. Trinity leading the SAA standings at 7-0. and Barry at 6-1. and Barry's only loss was to Trinity. Barry taking on Rhodes this afternoon, and Trinity closing out the regular season against Hendricks. Barry is on the fence right now as to getting a, yep. a berth, right? Yeah. So that's they're. a huge game tonight. Yeah, they, they've got to they've win with some style points to try to persuade the Russian judges. Yes. First down at the 43-yard line. Trips wide left, one to the near side. Dropping back, pressure coming. Young now rolls to his right and fires it underneath to a safety valve, complete out across the 50 and to the first down and a flag comes in. Might have a block on the edge here, a holding call on the edge. For now, it's a first down to Dyer Barnes, but let's check the flag. Yeah, the Pirates 
for some odd reason today just cannot contain Dyer Barnes. Barnes has been all over the place, and he's been Young's most prolific weapon today. And that's just a good experience right there because he realized his quarterback was in trouble and just kind of came back and made himself a target. But I think we're going to have a mark off. OPI. Maybe that's why he was open. Yes. <laughs> Those are the type of penalties you want to see, OPIs. Yeah. So that'll mark it back where it would have been had we not had the fair catch interference. It's so like it never happened, Melvin. It didn't happen. So I d it was a pick play, but I didn't see the pick play. Nonetheless, we'll take it. Yes, we will. First and 25, back of the 28-yard line. Again, the email address again. If you want to give a shout-out to your favorite player on either side, and Swanee fans will welcome aboard as well. It's southwesternfb at gmail.com. FB for football. Everybody should know that. <laughs> <laughs> Draw a play up the middle. Out across the 30 to the 32-yard line, a five-yard pickup. Maybe make it four yards. Going to bring up a second down and 21. Yeah, it's Walker Robinson on the carry. Both defenses today have played outstanding. Now for the Pirates, again, this is a team you should dominate. Let's get off the field. Let's get a three and out and get off the field. I agree. Who's going to blink first? That's what's coming down to right now. Getting close to that. Two receivers to the right, one to the near side. Jeremiah Young, the junior quarterback, in the shotgun. High snap, tracks it down, hands it off right side to the 35 and out to the 37-yard line. Another three or four yards for Walker Robinson. Going to set up a third down, and let's call it six with 6.20 to go, first half. Ashley's third and about uh, 16, actually. Oh, 16, yeah, that's right, yeah. Forgot about that penalty. <laughs> <laughs> so they need to get to the Pirate 47 for a first down. A little golden opportunity to get off the field. Remember, Swanee will get the ball to start the second half. Two receivers wide right, two to the near side. Three-man front. Pirates bring some pressure. Hand off right side, out across the 40, the 45, and stuck there at the 48-yard line. Ooh, that was a hit that time by Aiden O'Connor. It does force a three and out, so the Pirate defense, great job by standing up. O'Connor will make it up for the penalty with a good open field tackle there to keep him five yards shy of the first down. And Adrian Garza back to receive the punt here for Southwestern. Garza averaging well, 15 and a half yards on kickoff returns. Taran Kai is back to kick it. Lead that is 83. Good snap back, pressure from the edge, but he gets it away clean. It's a nice punt and a fair catch called for and made at the 12 yard line. So once again, not great field position here for the Pirates with 4.55 to go. Merle, quick update from Happy Valley, 14-9 at the half, Michigan with the lead in Lexington, Kentucky. The number 18, number eight, Alabama, goodness gracious, the eight seat, eight ranked. They lead 28-7 over Kentucky. Upset brewing up in Kansas. Texas Tech 10-0 over the Jayhawks. And the only other top 25 score in play right now in Nolens. Tulane 14-10 over Tulsa. Wildcat. Oh, oh fumble. 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 Ball's on the car, but I don't think the Pirates see it, and I think the Tigers have it at the 11-yard line. Tigers picked it up. Quinn Johnson mm. with recovery, and the Tigers will have first and goal from the nine. Spriggs in the shotgun. He did that, what I call the stop and pop move, and as he came up, got ready to throw, he was hit from behind, and uh, the ball clearly came out, and the Pirate defense has been stout all day. They're going to have to make their biggest stand of the, of the afternoon so far with 4.49 to go to keep the Tigers off the board. Absolutely, and the, the officials gave the Pirates a good spot. It won't be first and goal, but first and 10 from the eleven. Second Southwestern turnover of the afternoon. They had one picked off in the end zone on the opening drive. Merle, this may be the final game of the season, but you can make an argument. This is the, the 
most important defensive stand of the season for this defense. I would agree, and it's off to a good start, and we're going to get a sack right out of the gate. Off to a great start. Coming in from the backside was Jake Sesnick. And pushes him back to the 20-yard line, so a nine-yard loss on the first down play. That's what you want to see, a first down sack, pushing him all the way back to the 20. Got to love it. This Pirate defense came to play today. Yes, they did. Now they got a little green space behind them. And off left side, and they're going to lose a couple more. Nope, they got back to the line of scrimmage. Malik McDonald couldn't get the tackle for a loss, but he hung on long enough to drink, drag down Walker Robinson. Stacked up for no gain. Third down coming up. Yeah, this Third. defense is starting to flex their muscles now. Third down and 19. It'll be a 37-yard field goal attempt from here. And he missed from 41. Right. Trips wide right for Young. Robinson to the left side. Young dropping back. Stepping up between the pressure. Now he's going to tuck it under 20. And caught inside. Oh, incomplete. Had him open. You know, that was dangerous and close to across the line and, of scrimmage. And there's a flag on the play, and it could be unnecessary roughness on the Pirates. Boy, that would be a shame. I thought he was across the line of scrimmage. I did as well. I believe he was at the 18 when he threw the ball. Right. And the head official right now is with the side judge. Let's see if they think the same thing, because I thought that Young was well across the line of scrimmage. Right. The result of the play, fourth down, after the play, unsportsmanlike, white number 61, 15 yards from the Oh, wow. Line. Unsportsmanlike on uh, Swanee. That takes him out of field goal yes, range, it bro. Does. So they don't call him over the line, over the, uh, the line of scrimmage, which I think they might have missed that one. But this actually worked out a little bit better. Absolutely. They clearly missed that one because he was at least at the 18 when he threw that ball. And, and now they will punt it. And because it was after the play, that's right, it's fourth down. Yes. So it's a post-possession uh, penalty. So fourth down coming up. So 61 for the Tigers. That is Buck Harden, the offensive lineman. And the Pirates have no – okay, now they have someone running in as Adrian Garza runs in late for the Pirates. He's standing back at about his 10-yard line. Good snap back. And a high short kick, well done. Lands at the 10 and go. Beautiful job oh. coming back and downing it at about the two-yard line. My goodness. That was a heads-up play by Brody Sanderson. He planted himself in the end zone and then charged the football to keep it out of the end zone. And the Pirates have pinned down deep again with 3.30 to go. The first down 10 Pirates from the 12-yard line. Got to take care of the football here. Spriggs three yards deep in the end zone. Handoff gets it out of the end zone, out across the five to the 10. And up the sidelines and out of bounds to the 17-yard line. Good, beautiful run there by Leroy Rodriguez. Let's send it down to Chuck Crazy on the sidelines if we got his microphone working now. He was right there at that line of scrimmage. Chuck, you got us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, how about that? Uh, which play are you referring to? On, the on one the, where he crossed the line and yes, threw the it, pass? Yeah. <laughs> that would be the one. Yeah, Did he, he cross was, the line? He was definitely across the line when he released that pass. Uh, the, the penalty was after the play. They would have waved off the... Uh, the, uh, pass to the inner side of the 45 to the 50 and out about the 46 yard line, not to cut you off, but a big play there out of the backfield on the wheel route to Rodriguez. They would, they would have waved off the penalty anyway, you're saying? I think so, because of the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, you would have accepted that 15 yard penalty and yeah. pushed him out of field goal run. All right, well, we'll talk to you and Chuck, uh, you and uh, Coach at halftime, Chuck. Thanks for your patience. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. So a running play from Rodriguez and a passing play to Rodriguez has a Pirates in business at the 46 yard line. Swing pass underneath complete and gonna be dropped for no gain of the play. Nice job there by the Swanee defense. 
Yeah, the Tiger defense was all over that Merle. And yeah. luckily for the Pirates, it was for no game. But for a minute, I thought it was going to be face mask because they went very high on that tackle. Got an email from James Kirk, a Swanee fan. Says, can you, can you shout out to Tucker Kirk? It's his last college game. Number three, Tucker Kirk. There you go, Mr. Kirk. Second down and 10. And a pass over to the left side and nobody home. Spriggs threw it to the outside. And Graydon Thompson came inside. It's going to bring up a third down and 10. As Casey Allsat says, want to give a shout out to number 97, Joseph Nielsen, and all the seniors playing today. Go Pirates. Thank you, Casey. 17 of them. For a good majority of them, this is their final football game altogether. Now, some may go on to play some semi-pro or right. arena ball, but for a good chunk of them, this could be their final snaps as a football player, and it's going to be weird after today. Yes, it will be. Dropping back. Spriggs, third down and 10. Pressure coming. Steps up, and he's going to be sacked back at the 42-yard line. I'm telling you, Moral Quinn Johnson has been getting two Spriggs to the to Spriggs today too many times. And Johnson that time on the sack, he was there on the tackle to uh, stop it on first and 10. So Quinn Johnson has been a monster for the Tigers this afternoon. He's a beast, a fifth year senior, 6.7 tackles per game, 17 and a half tackles per loss, 11 and a half sacks. He's added to all of those totals here today. My goodness, Quinn Johnson is a monster, fifth year senior, Jesus. The Fournier set to punt it away from the 30 yard line. 84 seconds to go in this half, Merle, and it's still no points <laughs> on the board. You love defense as the whistle blows. And the yeah. Pirates are going to call a timeout. Yeah, I don't ever remember a scoreless game this late in the ball game that I've done, pretty much at any level, to be honest. So if you're on the Pirates sideline right now, you have to be a little frustrated at your play. Yeah. You've left many plays out there on the field, many points out in the field. A red zone turnover, first drive of the game, they're going to be kicking themselves as they go into the locker room yeah. here in the minute 17. Yeah, I think Southwestern is a little bit better football team, not dramatically better, but a, a little bit better. Right. And they're just kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit at bad times. Well, we talked about the end of the Trinity game three weeks ago. Hey, let's get these last two victories against Millsaps and Sawani to end the season on a positive note. And right now, they spotted Millsaps 10 points, right. came back and scored 42. So it's still a whole 30 minutes left to play. But got to be a little frustrating if you're a, a Pirate fan right now at the play of the team. Well, Dyer Barnes back to receive this punt. He's standing at about the 20-yard line. I wouldn't mind seeing him muff one here. See if Charlie Fournier can put some special spin on it or something. He'll hit it from about the 35. Launches it into the afternoon sky. I tried to jinx it, Melvin, but it didn't work. It'll be first <laughs> down 10 for Swanee at the 16-yard line. Yeah, but you make the argument that Charlie Fournier has been the MVP of this game thus far for the Pirates. He definitely, you know, kept the Pirates in the field position battle for sure. Yes. So now if you're Southwestern, keeping in mind that the Tigers will get the football to start the second half, don't give up a cheap one here. Keep it scoreless heading into the locker room and regroup and get back after it for the final 30 minutes of the season. And to be fair, the coverage downfield from the Pirates has been outstanding has. all game. Yep. Young has just put the ball on the money. And, oh, boy, almost a collision in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of about three yards on the play. Young tried to hand it off. Walker Robinson look, didn't look like he wanted it. And Swanee, very fortunate they didn't turn that one over. Second down and 12 coming up. Defense has been playing well. I wonder if the Tigers are just wanting to go into the locker room. Yeah. Because that's what it seems like right now. Very fast first half. And now that you've jinxed it, we're going to have lightning delays. and Possibly. The second half. <laughs> Hand off left side. Not much running in there. And going to get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Jason Lund on the tackle. Oh. He was all over that. That veteran pirate defense. 
You know, if I'm Southwestern, I might call a timeout here and try to get a block punt or something mm-hmm. like that. Why not? I mean, you have, what, two timeouts? To, yeah, yeah, you have two more timeouts. Call a timeout and see what your defense can do in your special teams. But the clock is still rolling. Ten seconds left. Looks like both teams are just content to go into the locker room here with a scoreless tie. I believe this is the fastest first half all season long. That's faster than a lot of high school games we've done. Yes. So we'll get to hear from Coach Austin for the first time today now that we've got things kind of dialed back in. And Chuck is waiting for him to intercept him at about the 40-yard line. So, Chuck, you've got him. Take it away, sir. Okay, Coach. Uh, scoreless first half. What are your thoughts? Coach, you made a lot of mistakes. We're going to go in. We're going to get it cleaned up and, and come out better in the second half. You mentioned uh, better defensively. You, your defense has played really stoutly in this first half. What are your thoughts on those guys? Well, they have. We gave them a lot of pass play. We've given them, you know, with that chance to sack the We keep giving up contain. Those are the mistakes I'm talking about that we're going to go in, try to get fixed. And okay. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Well, there you go, Merle. All right. So we didn't get a chance to talk to you very much in the free game, but. Uh, I mean, it looks like a really nice crowd today. It's senior day, so a lot of families here, a lot of recruits are, are here. Uh, pretty, they're watching a pretty good football game, Chuck. What's what's the atmosphere like down there on the field? Well, it, it, it is, uh, you know, there's a little bit of nervousness because they, obviously both teams want to finish this game uh, or this season with a win, right? Right. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of emotion down here on the field. I, I've seen some players – that were seniors, especially right after the pregame ceremony, uh, showing that emotion, uh, you know, not, not uh, uh, you know, baby tears, but, you know, the realization that uh, you're going to be moving on from this phase of your life. And yeah. If you've ever played a, a, a team sport and been a part of a team where you consider those uh, teammates your family, you, you really don't understand how important uh, – this time in, in people's lives really is. And so, you know, getting to be down here on the sidelines and, and seeing that emotion and that camaraderie, you really are pulling for these guys to come out with a win today. Yeah, you really are. They've been, you know, played so hard all season long, haven't had the wins that they might have thought they were going to get. But, you know, you can, especially those seniors, they really want to leave it out here on the field and, and send this program into 2024 on a high note. Well, and, and, you know, this is a hard luck team, especially this season. Uh, Breaks uh, just don't always fall the way of the Pirates, it seems. And, uh, you know, these guys deserve uh, to go out on a high note, and this is their opportunity. Obviously, you go to half uh, tied, you'd be satisfied with that. Uh, in any circumstance other than 0 0, you'd like to be out of hand uh, in a low score like this. But uh, the defense playing well. Uh, the offense uh, having shown spurts of moving the ball, but uh, they got to get out of their own way here in the second half. Yes, they do. And as I'm watching you talk uh, down there on the 40-yard line, everybody's watching you, man. You, you've got you got the whole. You look really important standing down there on the 40-yard line all by yourself. You are an important guy, there, Chuck. <laughs> Well, you, you know, they probably all have their headsets in listening to the broadcast as well. I mean, wouldn't you if you were uh, a parent or a fan of Southwestern University? I would. And it's these people are the reason we're out here, right? That's exactly Absolutely. right. Well, awesome job, and thanks for hanging in there. I'm glad we took the sledgehammer to the equipment and got it working, and uh, we'll talk to you in the third quarter. All righty. All right, Mr. Chuck Crazy. No score, believe it or not, after the first 30 minutes of football. We will take a break. When we come back, Melvin, to get you caught up on scores from around the nation. We'll look at the SAA standings again and uh, get you ready for half. Get a chance to look at the stats if I can and get you ready for half number two. So you're watching Southwestern Pirates football on the Vibe Live Network.
back here to Birkenbach. Melvin Jones here with you at the halftime report. We are scoreless. Donuts on the board. 0-0 zero, zero here in the season finale of Pirates football right here on Vibe Live. Let's take a look at a few scores, a few top 25 games going on right now down in Happy Valley. Number two, Michigan leads. Number 10, Penn State. 14-9, Jim Harbaugh suspended for today. He will have a hearing on Friday to see if he could coach the rest of the season. Down in Lexington, Kentucky. Number eight, Alabama, all over the Wildcats, 28-7. Upset Brewing in Lawrence, Kansas. Texas Tech, 10-0 over number 16. You have to look at that, the Kansas Jayhawks. And down in New Orleans, number 23, Tulane is leading Tulsa 14-10. Tulane looking to hope up, looking to hope, excuse me, looking to wrap up <laughs> the AAC title coming up soon. And right now I see nothing else on the board. See who else is playing. Where are we at? Army 14-0 over Holy Cross in Big Ten action, Indiana. 27-26 over Illinois, also in the Big Ten. Maryland down in Lincoln, Nebraska, leading the Cornhuskers 7-0. South Carolina all over Vanderbilt, 20-0. Virginia Tech, 38-7 over Boston College. Down in Death Valley, Clemson, 21-7 over the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Merle and I will be right back to look at the SAA standings and to look forward to 2024 with the Southwestern Pirates. We are all scoreless here in the season finale of Pirate Football. Scoreless 0-0, and you are watching Southwestern Football on Vibe Live. Well, first off, thank you for being here. It's Crosby's second state championship appearance. How does that sound?
And welcome back to Berkelbach Field. Halftime one you down. Merle Bertrand here along with Melvin Jones who's producing and doing color commentating today. Harley Hudson, Okoye Anderson on camera and Skylar Gillespie, our QA back at the comfy cozy Vibe Live Studios, better known as his living room, making sure that we're staying out in the air and looking and sounding good. No score. A lot of off or not not a lot of offense, but a decent amount of offense. A lot of movement up and down the field, but nobody's dented the end zone yet. Quick look at the stats. Southwestern with seven first downs. The Swanee has four. Um, some of the other highlights here. Total play, Southwestern ran 30 to 29 for Swanee. 150 yards for the Pirates, 123 for Swanee. So, again, not a lot of offense on either side. It doesn't seem like as much as you recall, Melvin, but you think about all the positive plays that you had, but how many negative plays as well, cutting into a lot of sacks, a lot of tackles for loss in the backfield. It's really kind of a game of whiplash for a nothing-nothing game here. Absolutely, and the biggest key, both teams with turnovers in both each other's red zones. Mm -hmm. That's why we're at 0-0. Both teams just leaving points on the board, and right now, 0-0, you, ex you can't expect that at college football these days. Right. Like, 0-0 is such a rare occurrence. Like, I, I, I'm just – dumbfounded that we're at this point right now in a very fast first half in real time it took less than an hour that's pretty crazy we'll see what the second half brings individual stats it doesn't get much more even than this for the pirates jalen springs five out of eight 61 yards no touchdowns and an interception jeremiah young five out of 10 85 yards no touchdowns and an interception leading rushers devin phillips eight carries 53 yards for the pirates walker robinson 14 carries 37 yards for Sawani. Dyer Barnes, three catches for 68 yards to lead the way for Swanee. And uh, Leroy Rodriguez, one catch, 37 yards, leading the way for the Pirates. So about as even as you could imagine in a nothing-nothing game. And, again, it's going to be who blinks first here in the second half. Yeah, the Pirates have to find a way to stop Dyer Barnes. He was a thorn in their sides the entire first half, already with over 60 yards, re receiving yards. He, they need to find a way to stop him. Other than that, the coverage downfield was fantastic yep. the entire first half. So 30 minutes of football left in the season, and Southwestern will kick off to start the second half. They'll have the breeze at their back, so Swanee will get the football first going into the breeze on a cool day here in Georgetown, Texas. Temperature here at 114 Central Time is a balmy 59 degrees, but at least it's dry. Still too cold for me, Merle. Yep. <laughs> Way I, too cold. And I grew up in Illinois. Charlie Fournier set to kick it from the 35-yard line. And he boots it down to about the 5, returnable from there. Up to the 10, to the 15, out across the 20. The 25 breaks across the 30, and finally knocked out at the 34-yard line. Pretty good return there for Swanee to start the second half. Yeah, Merle, and the other thing about the first half was the Pirates special teams – they were okay, but there were some plays kind of like that one where they gave up where, you know, special teams could have been a little better. But let's see what this defense can do. Will they stand on their head once again? The first down and 10-4. The Tigers going from right to left at their own 35-yard line in the road whites with the gold helmet and the purple numerals. Play action pass, dumps it off underneath. Nice one had a catch and going to be out to the 38-yard line. And pretty acrobatic three-yard pickup there by Cooper Alford, a freshman. A yep. lot of young talent on both sides of the field. Absolutely. For a minute, I thought that was a lineman downfield. <laughs> I did, too. <laughs> He's a big fella. Yes, he is. I thought that was 65 and not 85 <laughs> for a minute. So gain of three out to the 38-yard line, just underway second half. Trips wide right, young in the shotgun, one to the near side. Pirates showing pressure. They bring it from the edge, and whistles blow. And, yes, that was a good call. The right side of the offensive line moved. I think they felt that pressure coming and uh, tried to get a bit of a head start on it. That'll make it second down and 13. Yeah, I was looking, and I saw the right guard moved, and then the right tackle moved right after he did before the ball was even snapped, so good call by the officials. So second down and 12 from the 33-yard line. Pressure coming again. High snap, and met in the backfield and gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picking up a yard is Walker Robinson. Ran right into the teeth 
of that Pirate defense. And getting up from the bottom of the pile is Alec Gomez, the senior. He's been a fixture here. Yeah, Gomez came quickly and was able to get the tackle. So second and long coming up. Third down and or second down. It should 11. be third. It should, it be, third it should yeah. be third and 11. And they finally changed the marker. Young dropping back, rolling to his right. And there's going to be a holding penalty here. Pass over to the right side. Just throws it away. Pirates with great pursuit. And Gomez again along with uh, Blaine Corkin. Yeah, that was Jacob Shockley on the hold. They yeah. call it on Lucas White, but that was actually number 50, Jacob Shockley, on the hold. Needless to say, penalties declined. Three and out for the Pirate defense. Well, we've got a little bit of everything on Vibe today. Some high school football going on and some high school volleyball. Full share out of the Fort Bend area in Houston. Up two, to no, two sets to none over Barbers Hill in the regional finals. A chance to go on the state. we got youth football going on in Houston. And, of course, college football here. So spanning the globe of age rages here. And a short punt off the side of the foot. Pirates going to get probably their best field position to start the uh, to start off a drive the entire ball game. Nice catch on the sideline by Sergio Cobos. <laughs> <laughs> Pirates will get it at the 45-yard line. So that punt only went 22 yards. So, Melvin, you've got to take advantage of this. You've been fighting out of your own goal line the entire first half, it, it seems like. Not only that, but think about it. Their most successful drive the entire first half was the first drive where they threw the interception in the red zone. Right. And they haven't been able to penetrate this Tiger defense since. The first down and 10 Southwestern, their own 42-yard line moving from left to right. Trips wide left, one of the near sides. Spriggs, handoff, right side, reversing field, and pushing the pile forward out to the 44-yard line. Pretty nifty move there by Rodriguez. Gain of two, second down and eight coming up. Yeah, they have to reestablish the running game right mm -hmm. now. No Devin Phillips. I haven't seen him since the midway point of the second quarter, so I wonder if he's injured. Trips wide left, one of the near side. Second down and eight coming from the 44-yard line. Play action. Spriggs fires underneath, complete to the 50, and dropped right there near the first down marker, a couple yards shy. Nice comeback route there to pick up the, the yardage. Going to bring up a third down at about two. That was complete by Aiden Huerta. He's an old man. He's a junior. <laughs> Considering everyone else on the offense is drink, <laughs> as first from the sophomores, yes. Got to pick this up. Third down and two from the 50-yard stripe. Two receivers left here to the near side. Tigers showing some pressure, and then they back out of it again with the four-man front. Delay blitz, blitz coming. Spriggs pitch out left side, cutting it up and going to get the first down and more. Rodriguez across the 45 and out of bounds at the 40. Merle, remember early in the first half, yep. he said the call back to that option play, hold it for later on. That's exactly what happened. And, boy, they saved it for the right time because pressure was coming up the middle, so they run to the outside. Absolutely. Great play call by the Pirate coaching staff. First and 10 inside of Tiger territory. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Again, a delayed blitz coming from the right side this time by the Tigers. Drop into a three-man front, handoff, Rodriguez. He's getting it going, gets it down to about the 41-yard line, a three-yard pick up there, second down and seven. You know, another high tackle that time by the Tigers. They're getting awfully close from either a face mask or a, ho or a uh, horse collar. That was pretty close to that. Second down and seven coming up from the Tiger 41-yard line. That's at least the third time I've seen that yeah. today, Merle. One receiver left, two to the near side. Rodriguez lined up to the left side. Fake the pitch off, throws back to the right side, and a sliding catch made at the 22-yard line. Beautiful play design and a nice catch by Samuel Johnson out of the backfield. Actually, he lined up in the right slot. They moved all the motion to the left and then threw it back to the right. Samuel Johnson, guess what? A freshman <laughs> over the middle. Great catch. And a first down for the Pirates near the red zone outside the 20. Got to cash this in. You're in field goal range here, but you're thinking seven. Two receivers left, two to the near side. You got to think seven at this point. Spriggs, Rodriguez to his right. 
They give it to Rodriguez. Cutting it back up inside the 20. Breaks the tackle and going to get down to the 15 of the 14-yard line. Seven-yard pickup, second down and three. Yeah, Rodriguez again being the muscle for this pirate running game. Second and three, two receivers here to the near side. Hand off, Rodriguez. Stiff arm, right side, gets the corner turn to the 10, to the five, into the end zone, touchdown Pirates. Nifty, nifty running by the freshman Leroy Rodriguez and good blocking up front. He followed those blockers, Melvin. Very patient, picked his moment and cut it back up and the Pirates had drawn first blood. And that's what Rodriguez has been waiting for this entire second half is follow his blockers. He did that and was able to see pay dirt. So now Charlie Fournier on for the extra point out of the hold of Damian Gomez. Good snap and hold. The kick by Fournier is up, and it is good. So 9.51 to go third quarter. Somebody finally scored, and the Pirates lead it 7-0 on the touchdown run from Rodriguez. Yeah, again, they established a the run. That's exactly what they did the first drive to start off this game, and it was successful for them. Now, sustain, sustain, sustain. Right, right now, you know your rushing game is better then their defense continue to pound the rock with the rush. Yep. And let's see if the Pirates are ready to do that. Got a shout-out from a Swanee fan. Evetta Shockley says, we see you, number 50, all the way from Chat Town. Shocked to be aggressive, but don't suck. Go Tigers. We love you big. <laughs> Mom, Dad, Carly, and Evie. Talking about number 54, the Tigers. That would be Jacob Shockley, the freshman, another one. We but talked sh about Shockley earlier on that hold, and <laughs> he wasn't the culprit. Chat Town is Chattanooga, Tennessee. We are equal opportunity shout out givers. Speaking of shout outs, the mask men, Bob, old Bob Mask and older Bob Mask and oldest Bob Mask. There's about four of them out there. They want to give a shout out to the coach next door. That, of course, Nick Mask, former Pirate, the Pirates' first senior, in fact. The coach for Southwestern here is a kickoff coming from the near side, fielded at the 17-yard line of the 20 to the 25, and a nifty move out to the 30 to set up the Tigers first down and 10. You know, Merle, something came over to me, and, and maybe this is something Chuck could probably look into. What is going on with Devin Phillips? We haven't seen him since the beginning stages of the second quarter. I don't know if he's injured or whatever the case may be, but maybe – Chuck may have an, an idea on that. Nothing yet. <laughs> he gave us a signal, but he's going to find out. First down and 10 at the 34, the Tigers. With now 9.37 to go in this third quarter, Southwestern leading it 7 nothing. Defense need to, needs to have another stand right now. So a plus six on the game clock. I've been waiting to see if the Pirates will add a fourth rusher. Right now they're only rushing three. And here come the blitz. Yeah, coming from the edge. They dump it off underneath. Complete but blown up. What a beautiful job that time coming in. Reading it all the way. It was Luis Pena, a sophomore out of Corpus Christi. The pressure was coming in. Actually, that was not Pena. That was number 18 coming in. That, that was Cam Willis-Robertson. Willis Robertson. That was fantastic by Willis-Robertson. The blitz was right there, and there was no one from the Tigers' side to actually stop him. So fantastic by Willis-Robertson to get to blow up the play. So second down and 11 from the 30-yard line. Young to his right, and he's looked to pitch it out to the right side. But took it himself out across the 30 to the 32 yard line to pick up three. Brings up a third down and eight. You know, Murrow, the pitch would have been a safer play. He I probably would have gained right. more yards. Harley Hudson, our camera operator, wants to give a shout out to a veteran, Dallas. Dallas from Harley. Absolutely happy Veterans Day again to my brothers and sisters in the arms. 
Third down and eight from the 32-yard line. Two receivers here to the near side. Chance to get off the field, get the ball hands back in the offense. Pressure picked up. Now Young in trouble, rolling to his left. In trouble again. He's going to throw us to the sideline and out of bounds. Great pursuit by a couple of Pirates. But better Lund. better coverage, Merle. Yes. The coverage today has been outstanding. This is what we've been waiting for all season with this Pirate defense. The coverage downfield was phenomenal. So fourth down and eight coming up. Pirates figure to get the football back here. And a chance to make it a two-possession game. Good snap back. Almost got to that one. A wobbly kick lands at the 32-yard line and picked up there by guards at the 23 dangerously, but he steps up and gets it back to the 25-yard line. Not much of a return, Melvin, only two yards, but that ball probably would have rolled another 10 to 15. But you know what? They're starting at their own 25. Now, it's better than starting at their own 3 and 15 like they did in the first half. So the Pirates have some room to work with. And, again, let's get back into establishing this run game. I, yeah. I, I'm loving this run game. The first down 10 at the 26-yard line. I'm going to give a shout-out to my mom tuned in from the great state of Illinois. She just tuned in in time to hear the Pirates score. So, Hey, Mom. We'll, we'll blame, T, blame TJ for the technical problems <laughs> and give Mom credit for the touchdown. Hand off right side. Rodriguez again trying to get the corner turned and can't quite do it. He'll be rustled down to the 28-yard line. Go I want to field tackle by Malcolm Shaw. I want to give a shout-out to my girlfriend's 15-year-old son, Joseph. Happy birthday today. Happy 15th awesome. birthday. And we're supposed to be going out to dinner tonight for him. So exciting day. Oh, to be 15 again. And know what I know now. I, knowing what I know now, whew, if I had a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and eight coming up here from the 27-yard line. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Spriggs, handoff. Rodriguez right up the gut, across the 30. And out to the 35 to the 36-yard line, very near the first down marker. They should give it to him, and, and they, they will. will. Rodriguez running hard and angry right now. That's what you want in your running back. Brittany Bossett wants to give a shout-out to Bradley Thomas, number 10. Let's end this game with a bang, Southwest, and all the way from Beaumont, Texas, from mom, grandpa, and sister. Happy to have you folks aboard. Yeah, this offensive line the last two games starting to show their potential. Yep, starting to gel a little bit. Rodriguez breaks the first tackle, dies out to about the 37-yard line for a gain of one. That was Michael Milraney, the sophomore linebacker, slowing him up. Second down and nine, clock moving, 6.37 to go third quarter. Yeah, that was the first time I've seen all game where the offensive line just let someone come through on the coverage. Well, Milraney was able to stop the play Minimal pick up a yard on the play just for Rodriguez. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Quarterback draw. Spigs across the 40. And up to the 43-yard line. Going to bring up a third down and three. We had Jalen Spriggs on the final episode of SU Football Weekly on Monday night. Soft-spoken young man. Does all of his talking on the football field. You know, I would have loved to see Damian Gomez today his final game, but, you know, Spriggs is the future of the Pirate right. program, and it's good to see him get a lot of reps today. Two receivers left, one on the near side, play action, pass over to the right side, and off the fingertips, just a little bit off target there, trying to get it out to Mitchell Garrett, the junior from Magnolia, and it's going to set up a fourth down. The Pirates left to punt it away again. That was a lost opportunity because that's a first down. Yes. And to the point to where it's, the way the defense has played, that probably would have been the nail in the coffin right there. Yeah. So Fournier set to kick it again from the 30-yard line. He's been busy this afternoon. Fournier, junior now. Is it weird to see the players that you covered in high school and now where they are? It is a little weird, yeah. It's weirder seeing them in person playing in college than it is watching somebody on TV. You know, right. You get the, a couple of rare guys that play up at the D1 level. 
that's kind of surreal too. But yeah, absolutely, seeing him in person, and I had Charlie on the show earlier this year, and you know his his brother's well, a junior now, the leading running, running rushing back for Vandergriff, so still a connection to Vandergriff. But it, it's it's very strange. It is. All right, so Chuck just sent it up to us. Devin Phillips isn't hurt, but just going with the hot hand. There's nothing wrong with that. There you go. First down play here for the Tigers trying to get something going, and that pass is incomplete, thrown behind his intended target. And the reason he threw it behind his intended target is because Jason Lund was in Young's face. Jason Lund has been all over the place today. And yeah, he was right there. They were starting to flare, Melvin. I was looking to see if there was a flag. Yeah, I was too. So second down and 10 at the 26-yard line. Lock stop, 529 to go third quarter. Southwestern up by seven. One receiver right, two to the near side. Young, pass right, off the fingertips and incomplete. Ooh, had him on a slant ooh. pattern with a head of steam. They tried to get it to Joe Contrell, and that would have been a big play, but a lot of mustard out of short pass and throwing a little bit behind him. Not only would that would have been a big play if we came down with it, but there was a defender in the area. Yep. That would have been pick six. So Southwestern defense trying to answer the call one more time here in a third down and 10 from the 26. Trips wide right, one to the near side. Pressure coming up the middle, picked up nicely. And now the pocket breaks down, rolling to his left, fires over to the left side, deflected and almost intercepted again. Batted up in the air by Peyton Ludeman. Unfortunately, nobody was there to get the tip. Yeah, that's twice in a row where the Pirates could have had a pick and just no one in that area. Yeah, Ludeman could have came up with the pick, but he was just inside after he tipped it. Yep. The Pirates doing a great job getting pressure and forcing those throws to come earlier than Young wants to throw them. And now Garza is standing back at his own 22-yard line awaiting this punt. Nearly blocked. He's going to get one of those before this day's over, Ludeman is. And it's going to be down at the 35-yard line. I want to take a moment to thank all the sponsors of Pirate Football. I haven't done that today, including Antioch of Georgetown, Baylor Scott and White Healthcare, Chapel Realty Group, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Don Hewlett Buick and Chevrolet, Double Days Pizza, Eagles Wings Home Improvement Services, First Texas Bank, Gary Brown CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers, Fries and Shakes, Minuteman Press, Primerica Financial Solutions, Rudy's Barbecue, John F. Lewis CPA, Schlossky's of Georgetown, Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm, Georgetown Shirt Company, HEB, House of Gains, Ross and Champion CPA, GTX Wealth, Jersey Mike Subs, and the League Kitchen and Tavern. Look at that. I timed it perfectly. Pass. Slot over the middle. Complete to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, and knocked down at the 40-yard line. Beautiful pitch and catch. Samuel Johnson hauling in another one, Melvin. Best pass of the afternoon for Jalen Spriggs to get inside the Tiger territory. That was outstanding by Spriggs to find his tight end. The Pirates on the move again. First down and 10 at the 41-yard line of the Swanee Tigers. 440 to go third quarter. Up by seven, looking for more. And oh, there's Phillips back in the game. It's going to be wrapped up and dropped for no gain in the play. Crashing in backside was Mill Rainey. Going to bring up a second down and 11 after the loss of a yard. You know, Merle, we're going to have a flip next season. We're going to have a lot of experience on the offensive side. And defensively, the Pirates are going to be young. That's a great point. Yep. So I'm interested to see how this offseason will go as far as recruitment for the defense, see if they can improve there as well. It is very much a veteran defense, especially up front. The secondary is very young as well for the Pirates, but the interior is very veteran pass over oh, that's the left. A got touchdown. receiver open. Oh, off the fingertips, incomplete. Unable to haul it in was Graydon Thompson as Briggs took a shot. He should have been rewarded with a touchdown there. Thompson just could not bring it in. Not for sure thought that was a touchdown. And Thompson just couldn't reel it in. 
Briggs hung in there, took a big shot. Instead of six, it's third and 11 from the 42. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Got to go back to work and pick this up. Briggs, pitch out left side. Phillips, 40, 35, has a first side of more inside the 30, out of bounds of the 27-yard line. That option play again, Merle. Yes, it is. They haven't stopped it, really. A lot of confidence in your running game when you run it on third and long. Yes, yes. And you know, I don't see a lot of college teams run the option anymore, mm -hmm. but maybe it's one of those where teams don't expect it, so maybe – you know, some of them could go back to it, and it's working well for the Pirates this afternoon. Garrett, David, Garrett Davids Meyer checks in and tied in now, lined up to the left side. Two receivers to the near side. First and 10, fresh set of downs at the 28 yard line. Straight ahead, handoff. Bounces it to the right. Phillips cuts back at the 25 and spins inside the 25 to the 24. Second down and six coming up. Four yard pickup, that's what you need on these running plays. Mm -hmm. Say it all the time. I'm not a math major, but three times four is 12. That's all more day than long. 10. <laughs> Second down to six from the 24. One receiver left trips here to the near side. Lateral. That's a live football. Got to fall on it, and he does. So Phillips falls on it. Merle, I've never been a, a huge fan of those screen type of plays because no. it can get yourself in trouble. And, look, that was a huge loss. Loss of, what, six on there? Yeah, you're That's, all the way back to the 30 now. Yeah, it's one of those where sometimes that sc those screens just don't work. So third down and 12 back at the 30-yard line. If nothing else, keep it in field goal range here and make it a two-possession game as well as your defense is playing. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Sprigs with Phillips to his right. Option There's a pitch again. out, yep. Right side and spins inside the 30, lunges down to the 26. So it's going to bring up a fourth down, and I think we're probably going to see Charlie Fournier on here for a field goal. I would love to see the Pirates use more RPOs going forward, especially with Spriggs out there, because you can use his legs and his arms as weapons. And the RPOs with the right quarterback – can and will work. So this will be a 43-yarder from the near hash out of the hold of Damian Gomez on the season. Fournier is now 29 or 29 in point after us, just 4-7 in field goals with a long of 35, but he's had some block. So this one from 43 yards, good snap and hold. The kick looks good from here, and it is good. It drills it through, and the Pirates have opened up the 10-0 lead now with 1.18 to go. Melvin, as good as the defense is playing, that is huge. That was fantastic by Fournier, and that was monstrous. 10 nothing. We were scoreless at the half, Merle. Yeah. So now that could have been right there, the nail in the coffin right there. Two-score game now with 118 to go in the third quarter and the entire fourth quarter. Normally you wouldn't say that, right. but the way the defense has been playing this afternoon, that could have been it. If nothing else, it gives you a mulligan. Yes. You know, one, one, one weird, quirky play isn't going to make the difference now. You've got one to give. Right. I'm curious to know and hear Coach Austin's comments at the end of the game. This Pirate team left a lot of points on the board today. Yeah. A lot of points. So happy to get the win if they win, but, you know, got to be a little frustrated at right. the fact that you didn't, you know, put more points on the board. And that's okay. This is a young offense. They're only going to get better. The 48 to kick it away from the 35-yard line. There's that short pooch kick that he's so good at. That's going to be filled at the 23 to the 25. To the 30. And wrapped up at the 33-yard line. Nice return from Caleb Shea. But 36 ticks on the clock left in this third quarter. Pirate defense again, standing on his head, making sure that this Tiger offense doesn't penetrate. Young pass over the right side and incomplete. Threw that one into double coverage. He may have been lucky that was incomplete. Two Pirates in the neighborhood. Sussick out there. 
Dagham Samuel was the intended receiver. He had Samuel on the flat and just overthrew him. So it could have been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what it could have, should have. Yes. Instead, it's third and 20 coming up here from the 24-yard line. Young in the shotgun. Quick drop. Blunt again, putting on the pressure. Forces Young to roll to his left. Fires underneath, and Ooh. it is. Oh, that was wild. You cannot come any closer. Cam Willis-Roberson, he had three picks in the game back in September. He almost had a pick six right there. And Robertson had was real close. That could have been pick six territory right there. But, again, Pirates defense coming up huge. But don't look now, Melvin, but the Pirates are 25 seconds away from taking a shutout into the fourth quarter. Good snap back. Boy, Littleman just keeps getting closer and closer. And you said it, it, Merle. You, you said it. He's going to get one of these by the end of the day. He's not getting there, but he's forcing bad punts. He's Pir having to rush it, and that one's only about a 30-yard punt. Pirates will have great yeah. field position at the 48. Wow. Well, Southwestern football going left to right for the final 20 seconds of the third quarter. They've got it on their own 48-yard line. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Briggs in the shotgun. And he's going to keep it himself across the 15. Good run there to the 47-yard line. Checking into the ball game is sophomore quarterback Sam LeBlu. An embarrassment of riches in the backfield for Southwestern. Absolutely. And again, the option worked to a T that time. Pick up a four on the play. And that is the end of the third quarter. So 45 minutes in the books, 15 minutes left in the 2023 season. And uh, Chuck Gracie down there on the sidelines at about the 22-yard line. Pirates are going to take a shot out in the fourth quarter. Can they hold it? I think they can, uh, Merle. The energy down here is, is pretty good. The, uh, the team feels confident. And uh, the way the defense is playing, why not? Yeah. I think uh, if they can maintain the possession of the football relatively decent in this fourth quarter, they should come out of this with a shutout. And that's huge. That, that is huge. His defense has you know, been kind of rebuilding throughout the season. So hopefully they can close it out here. At least get the win, but the shutout would just be icing on the cake to head into the offseason with, for sure. Yeah, and you know, you, uh, uh, Melvin just mentioned the embarrassment of riches at running back. I talked to some of the injured offensive linemen, guys that would have been in the starting lineup at this point in the season at halftime. And that's all they talked about was uh, uh, how, how many running backs they get to block for next season. Yeah, I'm sure they're looking forward to that. Thank you, Chuck. We'll talk to you in the uh, post game with uh, hopefully a happy Coach Austin here in about 20 minutes or so. Second and five. Teams flip sides. Pirates now going from right to left at the Tiger 47-yard line. Ball in the near hash. Two receivers split out to either side. Spriggs. Handoff. Little blue. Cutting it back up and can't get past the maybe picked up a yard down to the 46-yard line. Good job there by the Swanee defense stringing them along. You know, Merle, we talked about how this offense has only put up 10 points this afternoon. Let's give some love to the defense. The defense yep. has played outstanding. If anything to take away from this ball game is the fact that your defense have given up 10 points the last two games combined. That's a great point, yeah. 13 points given up last week, but Seven of that was the pick six. Dropping back, looking, pass underneath, complete to the 40-yard line, and spins, breaks a tackle, and dies down to the 38. Graydon Thompson hung on to that one, and it's good for a Pirate first down. And again, with the RPO right now, while there's not a whole lot of pass, passes coming from Spriggs, guess what? The threat of the run is opening yep. up more options in the passing game, and that's fantastic for the Pirates going forward. 
First down, Southwestern at the Tiger 39-yard line. One receiver right trips to the near side. There's that halfback screen. He's going to pass it. No, but he's going to tuck it under a run. To the 35, to the 30, and inside the 30, down to the 28. Good decision there by Vance Mills. That was designed to be a wide receiver pass. He pump fake, realized he didn't have it, Melvin, and just got what he could get out of it. That was intelligent on Vance Mills. Vance yes. Mills saw there was no one open, pulled it down, got the first down anyway. First down, Pirates at the 28. Breaks in the shotgun again. Fakes the handoff. Pass over the middle. That ball's caught at the 10 to the 5. Inside the 5. Down to the 2-yard line. Great catch by Aiden Huerta in traffic. First and goal, Southwestern. Again, the RPO worked to the T. It was fantastic. It was beautiful. Beautiful throw by Jalen Spriggs all the way to Aiden Huerta. And it worked at the charm. Spriggs were right there all the way down to the 1. Plenty of time left, but you just got the feeling if you can punch us in and go up by 17 with less than a quarter to go, the way this defense is playing. Oh, it's a wrap. You're in pretty good shape. Yes. But you got to get there first. First and goal from the two. Collision in the backfield. Spray's going to take it himself. It is. Flies across the end zone. Touchdown. That's exactly the type of drive that the Pirates was looking for all game long. They got it here at 220 – it has eclipsed here in the fourth quarter. So it took all the way to the fourth quarter right. <laughs> to get the drive that you were looking for, but you got it. Yeah, Spriggs had three of those guys last week, and he tacks on another one here this afternoon. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season, 48 on for the extra point. He's been perfect in that department all year. Out of the hold of Gomez. Kick is up. And right between the uprights. 12 minutes, 40 seconds left in the season. The Pirates now with a 17 minute nothing lead. And now the defense can really pin their ears back. Absolutely. They know all pass is going forward. So you as a defense, you're going after the quarterback as much as you possibly could. Give a shout-outs all day long. Give a shout-out to the Swanee fans who made their way down here from Tennessee. Nice contingent of them. That's not an easy trip I'm going out of state to follow these teams around. Quick score update. Murrow from Happy Valley, number two, Michigan, 17-9. In the fourth quarter, they lead Penn State and in Lexington, Kentucky. Woo, number eight, Alabama, just absolutely rolling right now, 42-14 over Big Blue. Well, what are these Kansas and Kentucky, these basketball schools, thinking they're going to compete with top ten schools? <laughs> Look, I'm born and raised in a city where it was a basketball school in UNLV. UNLV football is 8-2 and two this season. Oh, wow. That's that, a pooch kid field at the 37-yard line. That hasn't happened in my lifetime. <laughs> and we're talking about 40, coming up on 42 years. That has never happened in my lifetime for UNLV football to outdo basketball, but here we are. Well, even a broken clock is right twice a day. That's what my wife tells me all the time. That's all I get to be right twice a day. This is true. <laughs> Tiger football, first down 10 at their own 39-yard line. A couple of historic programs battling it out here. Founding member of the Southwestern Conference against a founding member of the SEC. And off. Oh, toss back. Pass over to the left side. That ball is caught the sideline and out of bounds. No incomplete. He stepped out of bounds. Wow. Looked like he had some green had grass. Yeah. Trying to see if they put a replay on the big board. But it looked as though, as though he, he caught it in bounds. Got it down the field. Nice job by Cooper Alford, the tight end. But the official right there called him out of bounds. The old Statue of Liberty play there, and yeah. it almost worked. You know what the talent coming back next season on, on offense, Merle, is it would be hard to argue that Southwestern could be the third best team in this conference behind Trinity and Barry. 
Rolling to his right, new quarterback in, pass it to the right side, complete. That time he stayed in bound and is going to get inside the 50 down to the 47 yard line. New quarterback in, by the way, is Jaden Bragg. But this score holds up. They're going to finish up three and seven. But uh, three and five in the. Is that wait? No, wait. Yeah, three and five in the conference. Yeah. Yeah. They were 0 2 in non conference games. Right. Dropping back, Braggs. Looking, pass for the right side, complete, breaks the tackle, the 40 to the 35, and going to be stacked up there at the 34-yard line. New quarterback coming in, and now they're pushing the ball down the yeah. field. Ludeman and not sure who number 12 is. Number 12 on the Pirates is J.P. Reyes. That can't be right. He's listed as a quarterback. In any event, first down 10 at the 33-yard line, trips wide left, one of the near side. Dropping back, looking, looking. Pass over the right side, going for it all. That ball is incomplete. Great coverage down the field. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm liking this Bragg uh, QB from the Tigers. He has a lot of flair to his game. Freshman out of Smyrna, Tennessee. He's just a freshman. My goodness. But, yeah, back to your point. The Pirates at this school holds up. They finish 3-7, three 3-5 and seven, three and five in the conference. There were a couple of games, had they played just a little bit better, they, yep. they could have very easily flipped that. It would be 5-3 and three right now. The only two games, at least here, that they were non-competitive were Trinity and Barry. There's a sack in the backfield back at the 37-yard line. That's who it McDonald was. Along, yeah, along with Jason Lund. Yep, Jason Lund again. And we've got an injured Tiger down in the field, our first injury here of the afternoon. Yeah, Trinity pretty much handed our head on a platter, but uh, – the Barry game, there were flashes. There were there were signs that the Pirates yep. could hang in with the, in there with the Barry College. And it's one of those to where as hey, next season to see how much talented and how much better this Pirate team when it stacks up against those two teams. Yeah. And they are going on the road to both of those teams next season. Yes, they are. Now, Southwestern has shown it's been a theme all year. If they don't do dumb stuff, they don't hurt themselves. Right. They can play with anybody. The TLU game was one of those games where it was a lot of just failures on, on, on defense primarily. Right. And now they've, as the season progressed, they've gotten so much better defensively that I wish that they would have played TLU now. Right, right. And it could have been a different story. Try to get a look to see who the injured player is. I haven't gotten a good look yet. That's a, a 50 number, I can tell you. Yeah, so he's sitting up now, so that's a good sign. It might be Jacob Shoffley. It is. It Jacob is. Shoffley. Oh, no. Just a freshman. And you only can hope that's not an ACL or something like that because he is hurting really bad right now. Putting some weight on the left wheel, but being helped off the field, and we certainly wish that young man the best. Hate to see that at any time, but it's the last game 10 of the minutes season. left in the season, yeah. My goodness. Definitely hoping it is nothing bad. Oh, man. Young man played his heart out there today. Shout out to his parents who's watching this game, but man. Okay, so they've helped him off the field. We'll resume play here. Third down and 15 coming up from the 38-yard line. Ball in the near hash. Trips to the near side. Bragg, the quarterback. Dropping back, looking. Being pursued. He's going to be down. sacked again. Down, down, down. This defense is coming up big. Malik McDonald, another senior. From Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And Mesquite Horse, Mesquite Horn High School up in the Dallas area. You had him on the show earlier this season. You love to see the seniors come out their oh, final yeah. game and just play their hearts out. Well, Brad came in, gave him a spark, had him moving down the field, but then the Pirate defense reasserted themselves. And the Tigers set to punt it away again from the 40-yard line. Ooh, <laughs> you can see he's from getting that angle close. how close he's coming. <laughs> Fielded by Garza at the 14, gets it back to the 15. 
I mean, it's almost like 3D Linda, uh, coming in. Peyton Ludeman just charging in and just getting a fingernail on the football. Ludeman is going to get one. He has to get one. It's just destined for him to get one. 9.58 left in the season. Pirates in command here, 17 to nothing. Not out of the woods yet, but it's looking better. So we might be back next year, but if we are, TJ can't come back because the Pirates have won a game with him not here. Oh, so TJ's the jinx. <laughs> TJ, if you're watching, please email us, please. <laughs> Procedure penalty on the Pirates. That'll push him back five yards. In his defense, they've also won a game, a home game with him here. So This is true. That's what he would counter with. <laughs> First down and 15 at the 11-yard line after the penalty. Two receivers to the right, two to the near side. Spread quarterback draw. Stop and pop. Got a receiver behind the defense. Wide open. Copley Bartlett to the 30, 35, 40. Right at the middle, 45. Bounces to the outside. Gets a block. Stumbles down to the 40-yard line. Couldn't take it to the house. Saving the touchdown was Harris Cravens. Kobe Bartlett wide open. The RPO again opens up the passing game, and Kobe Bartlett going all the way down, and there's an injured Tiger. Looks like that is number 29, Cabal Caldwell, the senior, down in the turf. Well, you've been talking about it all day, Melvin, what that, what the running game and what that play action does. When you combine that with Jalen Spriggs' stop and pop move, that gets the defense just sucked in like moss to a flame, and Bartlett was 20 yards behind everybody. And absolutely, and you see Jalen Spriggs, what his strengths are. Mm -hmm. And the RPO game is his strength. I know a lot of coaches want that drop back passer, and that's fine, but when you have a quarterback, you need to pay to his, his strengths. And right now, we are seeing the strengths of Jalen Spriggs as we go along in this game. Caldwell able to trot off the field under zone power. That's good to see. Pirates at the Tiger 40-yard line. That's good to see. 9.41 to go fourth quarter. Southwestern up by 17, trying to close it out on senior day. Two receivers wide right, two to the near side. I'm expecting Sam LeBlue to get a carry right here. They fake it to him. Hit as he throws it, and a sliding catch made at the 23-yard line. They're going to say There's catch. There's that guy again. Samuel Johnson, his third catch. Not a single one of them has been routine either. Now, there was a play earlier when it said the receiver trapped the ball, and they called it incomplete. That looked more trapped than the <laughs> first one. But we'll take it, completion yep. in the first down for the Pirates. Pirates on the move at the 23-yard line. Looking to put the nail in the coffin here. Two receivers to the right, two to the near side. Sprigs, hand off the blue to the right side. And he's going to be stacked up after this, a gain of a yard, but... Does stay in bounds, so the clock will keep moving here. Second down and nine coming up. That's almost more important than the yardage gained at this point. Yeah, it's time to eat up clock now. The game is essentially over now. You can just play the clock game. Get out of here. Go celebrate this victory. And be happy that you leave 2023 on a positive note. Two receivers right, two to the near side. Second down and nine from the 22. And off up the middle, Rodriguez breaks the first tackle and pushes the pile forward to about the 21. Hard-earned yard there for Leroy, Leroy Rodriguez. Man. The third and eight. Rodriguez, LeBlue, a lot of Phillips. All of these backs coming back for the Pirates next season. Goodness gracious. Safe to say it's going to be a pretty intense competition start yes. starting this spring. Yes. Colby Bartlett's just a junior. He started off the season at running back before he got hurt and has worked his way back into the lineup, played both running back and receiver. Play action pass, Spriggs dropping back. Now he's going to step up and run, has some running move, bounces to the outside, gets a block, 
And very near the first down marker to the 13. I think he might that, be a little bit shy. That's going to be close, but I think they're going to mark him at least a half yard shy. Clock continuing to roll, coming up with the seven-minute mark here. Now, you could try a field goal for Fournier. It would be 14 to be 31-yarder from here, well within his range. Uh, if I was Coach Austin, I would actually go for it. It looks like he is. It looks like he is. Just need a yard or two. He can gamble a little bit with the up by 17 as well as your defense is playing. Maybe a draw coming up. Great. And off. Rodriguez Face to the match. outside, and it's going to be inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. First and goal, Pirates. Yeah, it was obvious, not called, but the Pirates pick up the first down anyway. Wow, and the, the side judge was right there and didn't throw the flag. From up here, we saw it, and that was a clear face mask. Yeah. So first and goal. Dugan Sexton split out wide to the right to Junior. He'll be back next year. Two receivers here to the near side. Spriggs. Hand off Rodriguez. Up the middle and breaks one tackle. Gets it down to the six. Got to bring up a second down and goal. Great awareness by Spriggs. Spriggs waited until it was five below the play clock. And checking into the ball game. Seeing the there he is. Damian Gomez. That's a classy move here by Coach Austin. Absolutely. For a classy young man. Started out the season as a starter. Gave way to Spriggs. And he's going to come out and finish out his collegiate career on the field. Second down, a goal from the seven-yard line. Going to take it himself to the five minute of the end. Touchdown. touchdown. There you go. And look at that pirate bench. Gomez getting mobbed by his teammates. I know it's quote-unquote unprofessional to cheer from the press box, but this is a pirate broadcast, oh, so yeah. let's go. <laughs> it is great to see Damian out there as a senior to get one more touchdown in the pirate uniform. Absolutely. Fournier on for the extra point. Good snap and hold. The kick is up. And it is good. 5.27 left to go. Pirates have locked it up now 24 to nothing here on senior day. I mean, it's not the 42 last week, but 24 is still pretty good. Pretty good. The defense, though, the defense were the stars today. You got to love the way the defense played this afternoon. I'm, I'm very ecstatic that this defense came out and defended home home turf and you got to love it yeah and really the only drama left in this game is can you hang out of that shutout that is incredibly hard to do in high school it's harder to do in college yes five minutes 27 seconds left looks like michigan is going to come away with a win 24 9 with 409 to go in the fourth quarter so number two Stands tall without their head coach. Kick off from Fournier. Short, high kick. Field at the 35 on a dead run of the 40. Look out, 45, 50 uh -oh. foot race. And knocked out at the 43-yard line. Save of the touchdown was Aiden O'Connell because he had a head of steam over there. That's Barnes again. Yeah. Barnes has been the kryptonite for the Pirates all game long. Well, that didn't work out very well. Now the Pirate defense trying to preserve the shutout only has 41 yards of real estate at their back. The closest that the Tigers got was the last drive when they were inside the 30. Yep. And his defense still tall in. So here is Jaden Bragg and his long hair <laughs> back out at quarterback for the Tigers. Flashback to the 70s with that hair. Yes. Dropping back, looking, looking. Good protection. Fires over to the middle. Complete to the 27-yard line. Going to be good for about a 15-yard pickup. And a Tiger first down. Nice Trying to see who, who was that made that catch. Number 10. I believe that's Instead Barnes again. Barnes, yeah. If I didn't know, I'm just going to say his name. Odds <laughs> are I'm right. <laughs> First and 10 at the 27-yard line. 
Inside of five minutes to go. Two receivers left, one to the near side. Bragg dropping back. Barnes again. Barnes again on the left side to the 25, to the 20. First down. To the down. 15, and it's going to be a first down and 10 from about the 13-yard line. Had all the motion to the right and threw it back to the left. Diane Barnes has just been phenomenal this afternoon. I believe he's over 100 yards for the game. Let's see if I can track that down here if I got time before this play. It's your pirate on the field. Five catches for 81 yards. I think that was before that play. We'll see if it updates here in a second. Alexander Gomez down Ooh, the senior. senior. Boy, his brother just scored a touchdown a moment ago. Yeah, hopefully Alec is okay. Talk about guys that, yeah, he's going to take a forklift to get him off the field here. He's just going to come out. It'll be like the Black Knight and Monty Python movie, Search for the Holy <laughs> Grail. It's just a flesh wound. Barnes up to six catches for 94 yards, 15.7 yards per catch for that young man. He's had a ball game. So he's close to 100. First down and 10 from the 15. Bragg dropping back. Quarterback draw is going to dump it off underneath. Complete to the Here eight. Here it to is. Five. He's over 100. It's going to be first and goal down to the three-yard line. My goodness, Barnes. Four minutes, 17 seconds left. Swanee knocking on the door for the first time. Can the Pirates get a turnover or something to keep him out of the end zone? Come on, defense. Let's hold this shutout. First and goal from the three. Bragg in the shotgun. Bay pattern, left side of the end zone. That ball is incomplete, overshot. Looking for Barnes again. Why not? Second down coming up. I tell you what, the last seven and a half, we'll call it seven and three quarters, quarters that the Pirate defense have played, only 13 points given up is really, That's really good. Really good. Coming off of a late season bye as well. Mm -hmm. Second and goal from the three. Two receivers left, two to the near side. Bragg. Looking left and whistles blow. I didn't. There's Blue a flag on the line. near side. That'll push him back five yards. That may have been fortunate for Swanee because Morion Williams Jack was in the face of Bragg. So the Pirates defense catches a break now, pushes him that back five. Second and goal, but all the way back at the eight now. 347 left. One receiver left, two to the near side. Bragg in the shotgun. Dropping back. Hit as he throws it. Throwing it up for grabs and incomplete. And a flag. Pass. P.I. Oh, yeah, all sorts of contact there. I believe it's, it should be more holding than pass interference. Yeah. But the ball will be set at the two-yard line. That big fella again, Cooper Alford. 6'2", 235-pound freshman. Alfred, by the way, from Dallas, Texas, Bishop Lynch High School. So returning to his home state to face on the face of Pirates. First and goal with 343 left. Bragg. Bragg's a Bragg's ooh, runs ooh, into trouble. Ooh. Gonna be thrown for a loss back at the eight yard line. Pick your pirate. There are about six black shirts there. Lund was involved. Jason Lund with the one with the sack though. Yep. My goodness. All the way back to the nine yard line. If they give up the shutout, they're not gonna give it up gently. Second down a goal from the nine. Three and a half to go. Lay pirate coming onto the field. And Pirates try to get a timeout, and they got it just in the nick of time. Woo! And Coach Austin giving the official what for because he was screaming for the timeout, and they almost didn't get it. That was real close. As uh, 
Q Nevins was late coming onto the field. Right. So they had to get the timeout. Nevins, a freshman. And they do give the Pirates the timeout. Well, I would hope so. They're taking one. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it took a while for them to, to <laughs> confirm. But Coach Austin, you can tell he's not happy with that whatsoever. Coaches never stop coaching. <laughs> Eric Naranjo writes in and says, shout out to Devin Phillips all the way from Rockport, Texas, from his Phillips crew back at home. Thank you, Erica. Second down and goal from the nine. Bragg dropping back, looking. Under pressure, Wolves to his right. Fires over to the right side. That ball is caught, but he's out of bounds. I say out of bounds. Out of it bounds. Is. Great catch, but the feet never got down. And that was Barnes again. Great effort. That's Pretty good coverage. That was the only place that ball could go. Yeah, that was perfect coverage, but is that another number 10 or is that 18? Oh, and this oh. is going to be a penalty, and this is going to put – I think uh, somebody said something he shouldn't have. A sportsmanlike conduct. That was 19. That's, that's uh, Samuel – take him Samuel. He's still barking at the officials. That's a senior playing his last game right there, and he wanted that touchdown to get the shot off the board. That's emotion just taking over. After the play, unsportsmanlike, the 19th of the Oh, they called it on the Pirates. What? I think that was a mistake. It should be 19 on the offense. There it is. He changed it. <laughs> don't, be, don't, don't get me started on officials after <laughs> last night's Vandic of Lake Travis game. This home side of Birkenbach was about <laughs> yeah. to explode. Yeah. So it was first and goal at the two, and now it's all the way back to the 24-yard line. It's third, third and goal. goal. Oof. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. Two receivers left, one to the near side. Bragg in the shotgun. Pass over the middle, complete to the 12-yard line, makes the first man miss and knocked down right there. Good open field tackle out there. It's Barnes again. So it's going to make up a fourth down, and we will – Probably see a field goal, I would think, just so they can try to get some points on the board. Offense is standing right there, Merle. Yeah, Looks they like they're going to go for it on fourth and goal from the 12. Inside of three minutes left. So here's your shutout right here. Fourth down to goal from the 12. Fans are in it. Trips to the near side, one wide left. Bragging the shotgun. Dropping back. Stepping up, firing over the right side, and incomplete. They do no it. No flags. And the Pirate defense gets another turnover on downs with 2.41 to go. We said it, that the defense needed a hold, and they have done that. Now unless the Tigers are going to use all of their timeouts, this Pirate defense stands up and will have themselves a shutout to end the season. I would say they stretched that rubber band about as far as they could stretch it. They absolutely breaking. did. <laughs> First and goal. From the two and still gave up no points. Kudos to the defense on that one. Absolutely. Gomez back out on the field. He scored a touchdown a moment ago. Devin Phillips slide up to his left side. One receiver right, one to the near side. And Gomez going to keep it himself. Hanging out of the football. Dies out to the 15-yard line. That's the most important part, hanging out of the football. Three-yard pickup, second and seven. I remember last season I was filling in for T.J., Last season, and that was the first time you seeing Damian Gomez as and see him for the last time today at least get a couple of snaps on his final yeah. game as a pirate is fantastic. I love to see that. Absolutely. We've been talking about the seniors uh, on the show on Monday night, and I asked the coach about it again in the pregame interview. And these guys went through COVID and a weird six game spring schedule and all sorts uh, of goofy stuff. 2020 was awful. Yep. Stuck it out. Hand off, out across the 20 and out about the 24-yard line. They could have thrown the flag they there, and they, and and they now, didn't. Yep, things are starting to get a little heated on the carry for the Pirates. Joe Contrell, I believe there's all the flags. There's a lot of flags that time. Yep. C.J. Jackson took exception to the way he was handling out of bounds. Excuse me, that was Cason Holder, and it looks like he's going to be gone. Yep. Mm. Someone just got tossed.
definitely going to be maybe off settings, but I want to say someone may have gotten tossed. Well, they may be new conference rivals, Melvin, but uh, I guarantee it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be. Memories will, will last next year. Yes. The majority of these players are freshmen and sophomore. Yeah. Unfortunately, talking of the 26 year offense, tap it to the goal, third down. Wow. Oh, out Southwestern. Wow. I seen Holder get up and may have thrown the punch, but. Well, they gave the unsportsmanlike like to the Pirates. 151 left. At this point, you just want this game to get over with before tempers flare even further. Yes. Handshake line is going to be interesting. <laughs> yes, it is. But I said the officials have to talk about something. Two historic programs. Now district right, well, league rivals is going to be uh, – Next season is going to be fun. Yes, it is. Down in Alabama. So I'm curious to see how these two teams are going to match up. See I'm if not that so sure they, call, they called out on the right guy. They sh there we go. So they, they did call it on the Tigers. So the Pirates have it first and 10 at their own 13. If that was the case, they didn't mark off the 15 didn't yards then. Unless it was offsetting or something, but they didn't say that. that. That was weird. That was a weird sequence right there. Yeah. Gomez in the shotgun. Got to keep it himself right side. Out across the 15. Look at him lower the shoulder and pound it out to the 19-yard line. Gain of seven on the play, second down and three. Guaranteed this isn't garbage time to game Damon Gomez and all the seniors out there. Not at all. Their final game, they're going to go out with a bang. In the next 90 seconds, they're going to put everything they have in it. It's not garbage time, it's precious time. Second and seven from the 19-yard line. Pirates in no hurry, picking a time. Now it's rare that you see someone from the Division Three level go to the NFL. So, again, for many of these players, this is their final game. But, my goodness, what a way to go out. Gomez is still fighting, and he has a first down. Goodness gracious. All the way out to the 27-yard line. Inside of a minute to go in the season, they'll stop the clock to move the chains, and now they wind it again. So time for one or two more snaps. I think Gomez may let it go to 30, snap in, and let's get out of here. Victory formation time. Pirates had themselves a shutout to end the season. Yes, they do. The win itself is nice. Getting the shot out on top of it, like I said, that's just icing on the cake. Yes. Now Gomez with his final snap as a pirate. Takes it E. Gets congratulations from the youth movement there, Devin Phillips and the rest of the Pirates. The clock is ticking down. The teams are lining up for the postgame handshake. The clock is going to tick down, and Melvin Jones, the Pirates are going to get themselves a 24 to nothing. Shut out victory to close the 2023 season. Merle, we've seen growth from this team each and every game, and tonight was no different. A win is a win. Not as many points as they would have wanted, but this defense was phenomenal tonight. You got to give love to the, 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 to the defense, and a very young Pirate squad next season is going to be a very deadly Pirate squad as we move into league play in 24. That's exactly right. Yeah, the Pirate defense bought them time, bought the offense time to kind of get on track just enough to put some points on the board. That Absolutely. The difference in the game. I'm, I'm very impressed with the way this team rebounded, especially after the loss to Trinity when they gave up a 60-burger that afternoon. The last two games coming off a late season bye to give up 13 points in two games. Phenomenal. Phenomenal work by not only the players but the coaching staff to get the players ready for these last two games when everything was lost. Yeah. And they came out and they showed grit, determination, and they wanted this win for their seniors and they got them. How do you think about it? I mean, we've been talking about it all afternoon. We talk about it on the show. This is Division Three football. Very yes. few of these guys are going to play anywhere else, let alone at a, at a professional level. So they've got nothing to play for when they're looking at a 1-7 season. Right except for the love of the game. 
and for re and for each other. And the Pirates responded here down the stretch in the last two games to get the uh, the two wins and to uh, send this program off into 2024 on a high note. If the talk is well, Millsaps and Sawani weren't good. Forget about all that. They got two league wins right. to wrap up 2023. And, and three overall. And three overall. So, I mean, this team is young, but they're growing. And 25, 26, watch out. This is going to be a crazy time for Southwestern football in 25 and 26. And even maybe 24, as young as this team is, yep. they may can make some noise next season. Well, when you think about some of the stuff that's coming up, you know, I think we'll be back here next year at Berkelbach. Right. But the new stadium is coming in. You'll have the football right there on campus. So hopefully that'll get the student body more involved and, uh, you know, get some of the students out here in addition to the families and, and that kind of thing. And Pirates getting a nice standing ovation from the crowd that is here. The nice crowd here this afternoon on a, on a nice football, nice football day. Swanee, they're going to finish up their season at uh, three and seven as well. And, uh, you know. That's a fun conference. It's a fun conference to be a part of. The one thing I want to say for next season is we got to have more fans here in Barkerbach. We got to totally have agree. more participation from alumni to just fans to come out and support this team. This team is going to be special. Very, very soon they have the talent. It's just about putting it all together. And so I would love to see more participation from fans, family, whoever can come out next season to Barkerbach. And let's get this thing rolling with the Pirates. Completely agree. We're just kind of standing by, filling here, waiting for Coach Austin to join Chuck for the final time. And I think he's got him right now, right there at the 40-yard line. Oh, not yet. He's still talking to some of his players. That definitely takes uh, priority. Absolutely. A lot of handshakes going on, and gotta got to love it. A lot of pictures being taken. <laughs> but a lot of smiles. You know, yep. the seniors are going out. They're smiling, and looks like Chuck is ready to go. Take it away, Chuck. All right, Coach, you finished uh, conference play with a couple of wins and cap it off with a shutout here at home uh, this afternoon. Uh, you know, give us your thoughts on this senior class first and then how your defense played today. So excited for those guys. Send them out with a shutout and a, and a really well-played second half. That's so cool for them, and, and we'll miss them. Just send them off on probably the best way possible to shut out. Been a great half. Um, I told you halftime where we could play better. Right. We did. responded. We got them going. We got some things corrected. Great second. Now the defense. What are your thoughts on those guys? I know you've got a lot of seniors that are going to be out. Uh, you got a lot of young guys that will be coming in to take their place next season. You have a lot of experience offensively. Got a lot of young guys this year. Talk about that in general. Uh, I mean, yeah, you said it. So we'll have to replace a lot of defensive linemen replace some linebackers um, but I think we've got some young guys coming in and I think we'll be able to do that but there, there seem to be some big shooters defense like specialists so many seniors so many linebackers that's always tough it's like yeah. seniors and reload well and, and this program is still in a building phase coach you, you know you've got uh, 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 big projects going on in campus but you know we're going to probably play again here next season how do we get uh, more Southwestern support here in town. Well, you play well, right? You win, you win the first event, so uh, the buzz will certainly pick up when you get to the Probably one more game here, here at Brooklyn. It's a great stadium. Well, congratulations, Coach. We'll see you next season. Thanks, Good Coach. luck in the offseason. Well, there you have it, Merle. Uh, Coach, pretty pleased with today's performance, obviously. As well as should be. I mean, a shutout win, that is so hard to do. You know it as well as anybody else. That is so hard to do. And uh, what, what a great job by the defense and, and the offense, turning it on when they needed to turn it on. It, it, you, tell, you, know, you mentioned it, uh, used a good analogy. They stretched that rubber band as far as it could stretch <laughs> without it breaking. And that, that was dead on. I mean, the, the play, uh, the pass play that resulted in an a, a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Sawani, uh, that was uh, that pass was trapped. It looked like it. Granted, I've got southwestern colored glasses, but it looked trapped to me. The feet were in bounds. The pass couldn't have been better. Wow. Um, but he he he, did, he was dissatisfied with the call, and he continued to chatter. 
and it ended up costing Sawani an opportunity to break that shutout. Yeah, well, you, you take him any way you can get him when you, you know a young program on, on the rise. You'll take any, any sort of win. Any final thoughts here, Chuck, before we before you sign off for the year? Uh, you know, I, I, I really think this team is is really on the cusp. But Melvin said it a, a few minutes earlier. It, they're on the cusp of really being special. And uh, you know, the thing about college football, you you rotate out a a group of seniors and you bring in a new group of freshmen and then those guys have to gel together and they have to play well together. Uh, the coaching staff will likely stay pat and uh, that's a positive. You've got a lot of young linemen. You've got some guys that uh, were going to be starters on that offensive line that got hurt throughout the year. They're going to come back. There's going to be a lot of competition on the offensive side of the football, both on the offensive line, in the receiver room, as well as that running back room. And it's nice, uh, even though you're losing Damian Gomez, uh, Jalen Spriggs is, is well-seasoned going into the next year. Yeah, he got, he got a lot of wraps. Well, uh, Chuck, awesome job this year. And, uh, you know, you've been out there in the blistering heat. You've been out there in the cold, rainy kind of stuff. So hopefully it'll be a little bit more moderate for you next year. But awesome job all season <laughs> long. Hey, I love being down here on the sidelines. It, it it's a special kind of uh, broadcasting. Yeah, you, you got to keep your head on a swivel. Uh, you know, we were having some equipment problems uh, early in this game, and I was fidgeting with that equipment. And a couple of plays came my way. You you got to know to get out of the way, and as well as uh, <laughs> you, you got referees running up and down the sideline that like to knock you down too. So. Well, you know, we got Crazy's Corner on the show. We need to come up with a sponsor for that and, and incorporate that into the sideline stuff somehow. That'll be a that'll be an off season project for us, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you didn't call the uh, the backfield Lund's Lounge today with him oh. continuing that uh, that pressure. But it is what it is, right? Yeah. Well, awesome job, Chuck. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, Merle. Mr. Chuck. Take Crazy. care, Melvin. We'll see y'all. Well, Melvin, before we wrap it up here, I do want to give a shout out to all the seniors, and I hope I don't skip everybody. I don't need to be on camera for this. That's okay, because I'm just going to be reading. It'll be uh, Camden Terry, a senior out of Houston. Uh, Jason Lund, as uh, Chuck was just talking about. Some really familiar names. Blaine Corkin, Damian Gomez, a quarterback. Scrolling down here, Peyton Ludeman, the fifth-year senior. I think the Pirates the only fifth-year senior, if I remember right. Uh, looking down a little bit further, there's 17 of them. Alexander Gomez, uh, Adrian Garza. A lot of names, a lot more names than on a high school roster. Kadari Isa, Uam Okan. A lot of these guys, Melvin, as I look for more, you think about it, some of these guys you call all the time. Some of them we haven't heard their names very much, and yet they're still out here working and, and struggling and, and putting in the effort and sticking it out over the course of an entire season. Yeah, I was just looking down. Joseph Nielsen, he was just down there on the field, just taking everything in. And, and it's, it's one of those situations that's bittersweet. Yeah. The end of the season, positive, you got to win, but a lot of seniors gone. Yep. And this is their final game, and it's an emotional for them because they realize they won't play football ever again in life. This is it. This is it. This was it. And so for the seniors, kudos to you guys. You guys have put up a lot of work from Pop Warner to junior high to high school until now today, your final football game ever. I mean – it's definitely bittersweet. You go out on the win, but, man, yeah. it's going to hurt that you no longer will put on those pads every Saturday, every Friday, for that matter. So it's, it's bittersweet, but congratulations, seniors. At least you went out with a dub today, and that's all you could ask for. And now we're looking down on the field. Some of the Sawani seniors, they're emotional. This is their final game as right. well, so it's right. – it's, one of those things to where it's final game of the year, handshakes going on, and you know this is it. Man, it's got to hurt, but, you know, to know that you gave it all, that's the best part to me. Yep. It's, the world's going to look different when you wake up tomorrow morning without football. That's for yes. sure. A few more seniors. A shout-out to Micah Justice, Jamarcus Ross for the Pirates. Going back down to page two. What's amazing to me is I'm going through this, I'm seeing freshmen, 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 freshmen. It's, it's, it's <laughs> pretty insane. Uh, Justin Zamora, Matthew Gomez, William Whitehurst. Hope I don't miss anybody. Anderson Johnson, one of the starting offensive linemen. We saw him out there in the pregame coin toss, shaking up mid part of the season. Brian Gutierrez, Tanner Poole. 
And Malik McDonald, what a game he had. Keenan Mo, Joseph Nielsen, you were just talking about. And I think mm -hmm. I got everybody. If I didn't, I, think that's I apologize. Everyone. So awesome job to all those seniors. Absolutely. But we take a look at the roster. More underclassmen than seniors. This team is going to be loaded next year. Yeah, it is. It's going to be loaded next year. So I'm excited to see how far the Pirates will go next season. Not just for next season, but again, 25, 26. If they continue to recruit well, they are going to be a powerhouse in this league for years to come. In a league where Trinity and Barry right now holds it down, let's see what the Pirates will do the next two, three years going forward. Completely agree. Final thoughts? This was fun. This was fun this season. I had a blast giving you guys, you know, the scores throughout the game, highlights. Today I stepped in for TJ. TJ's, again, congratulations. He is going to, you know, be a master at something. <laughs> <laughs> so kudos to TJ. But for my very first full season here with Pirates football, this was fun. This was a blast. And um, we all do high school footballs on Friday night, but – it's a different vibe when you come in the stadium knowing that it's college football on yeah. Saturdays. And this was fun this season. I enjoyed myself and can't wait for next season. Well, awesome job. And uh, thank you for coming out. And um, Mel, want to get the, the highlights cut together. He's been cutting the highlights packages together and all that kind of thing as well. So uh, awesome job for Melvin. Thank you for making the trip up from San Antonio to Georgetown to come up to do these games for us. Thank you, Merle. Some, some very early mornings after <laughs> a late Friday night. So Right. All right, so that's going to do it for us this year. Before we go, I want to thank Southwestern's Director of Intercollegiate Activities, Ken Ralph Sr., Associate Director of Ath Athletics, Glenn Schwab, Associate Director of Ath Athletic Communications, Bailey Middleton, a Vanderbilt graduate, just had to fill that one in there, Rada <laughs> Haley with the Georgetown Sheraton, which once again hosted SU Football Weekly, the Georgetown ISC staff for being great hosts here at Berkebach Field, Coach Joe Austin, and, of course, you out there for tuning in, sending us the emails and all that kind of stuff all season long. For my broadcast partner, TJ. TJ, good luck down in Miami today. Our sideline reporter, Chuck Crazy. Cameraman, Okoye Anderson, who also comes up from San Antonio, did a great job for us. Harley Hudson, he was there every time we asked him. Micah Rose coming in, doing some camera for us. Producer Melvin Jones, technical director, Suna Vincott. Our quality administrator, Skyly Gillespie, and everyone at Vite Media. My name is Merle Birch, and I'm signing out one last time this year from Brookabach Field in Georgetown, where the Southwestern Pirates have shut out the Swanee Tigers by a score of 24 to nothing. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Allow us to be the first to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and holiday season, and we hope to see you next fall for more Southwestern Pirates football right here on Vibe. Good afternoon from Georgetown, Texas. Pirates fight for old Southwestern, so I'm a modern deer. Pirates fight for old Southwestern, so Southwestern will be loyal to the sun from the sky. And remember to the end that a fight will never die. Pirates fight, yeah we win.